Hey everyone, welcome to the Game Informer Show, a weekly podcast covering the video game industry. Join us each and every week as we discuss the latest news, reviews, and exclusive reveals with Game Informer staff, alongside special guests from around the industry. I am your host, Marcus Stewart. I am joined by Kyle Hilliard. Hello. Hello, how's it going? Ah, uh, going pretty well. Feeling good. Hope you are too. Uh, you know who else I hope is feeling well? It's Charles Hart. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Let's have fun podcasting. <laughs> As a wise man once said, let's have fun podcasting. <laughs> and speaking of special guests, we have not one but two today. Two recognizable faces, friends of the show. First and foremost, you know them, you love them. One of the hottest free agents in video game writing today, formerly of Prima Games, the youngest Elmo, Jesse Vitelli. How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. I like your hat. To talk some games. Thank you. Black I got hat. it when I was in Maine. It's for a lobster roll company. Whoa. And okay. they had sick merch. And I said, I'll buy a flannel hat. Why not? So wait, did they, is it a restaurant or do they just make lobster rolls and ship them to people? No, no, it's a restaurant, but they have like a takeout spot. And in the takeout spot, they've got like a bunch of crazy merch. Like I got my roommate a shirt that's, it's like a chariot, like a Roman chariot, but instead of horses, it's lobsters. And it's like made to look like, <laughs> like an Iron Maiden shirt, basically. <laughs> it's really, good. That's it's, it's pretty good. That's the most metal seafood shirt I've yeah. ever heard. And it was such, such a good seafood place. You got two pieces of their merch. Yeah, that's yeah. A, you're a yeah, committed you know fan. Highly, I like, I don't, highly recommend. I was like, it's I've never bought Roller. restaurant merch. No matter how much I like the restaurant, when they have clothes there, I, I was like, I don't. I'm not didn't gonna you, buy this. You worked at like an Outback Steakhouse for like a long time, didn't you? I mean, yeah, but they don't. I didn't buy merch there. Buy merch? <laughs> I mean, I had a uniform. You didn't get a blue and onion T-shirt. I don't even know if they make those. They they should probably if they don't. I don't know why, but a blooming onion I think should be a puffy vest and not a t shirt. Oh yeah. yeah. It should be. You're, yeah, probably. none of us can explain why, but you're hundred percent right. <laughs> <laughs> uh that voice that you heard with the greatest suggestion of all time is uh another hot free agent. Uh you know, fans of a uh, longtime fans of Game Informer, you might recognize him, you know him, formerly of GI, formerly of a lot of places, kind of funny. Im- Imran Khan, how you doing, man? How- Howdy. I actually have a surprisingly related anecdote to what Jesse was just talking about. Okay. So it's GDC week in San Francisco. I am walking around. There's a bunch of developers. I saw someone who I presume was maybe on the Sifu team or something was wearing a shirt that said Sifu apostrophe D. So it would read as seafood and just a picture of a shrimp in a fighting stance. So it's <laughs> like, <good. laughs> like yeah. saying like you go up and like you got seafood. Yes. You got so- seafood. But it's a shrimp, so it's actually seafood. I like sat. I stood there. I didn't ask them any questions because I don't want to like go up and bother someone and be like, "Hey, I, I love your game. Also, what's with the shirt?" But like, it was one of those things where I had to ask uh, someone I was standing with, "Of, do I see that shirt right? Am I like? <laughs> Did I dream this? <laughs> yeah. Is, 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 am I on something right now? Because this that seems amazing. So if they're not selling that, they should actually sell that." Yeah. They should. It sounds like getting attacked by seafood, which reminds me of a, a Game Enforcer article I wrote, I think, two years ago when Elden Ring came out about, like, because <laughs> remember those giant lobsters that they have in the game? Yeah. And we did a joke of, like, Red Lobster partnering with From Software <laughs> to add Cheddar Bay Biscuits to the game, like sentient <laughs> Cheddar Bay Biscuits that walk around where the lobsters hang out and just, like, this weird cross-promotion thing. It was a really, really dumb idea, but it I was mean, funny. I swear. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like every notable chicken restaurant missed out on partnering with PUBG at the height of its popularity for like winner yeah. winner chicken dinner. Yeah. Like they should have done something with that. Yeah. Though, oh yeah, the, there is like a chicken cross promotion with Rebirth, which is like oh, really inappropriate one. for yeah. Wait, what? Like, consider no. So there's a side quest in that game that is about saving chickens. That side quest is god awful. But oh, also like god. oh yes. Yeah. Sorry, I just had a flashback to like a moment <laughs> that I was trying to delete from my memory. Yeah, I did I hated that side <laughs> quest. Okay. Yeah. But like when you consider what how that side quest ends and then it's like there's a Popeye's tie-in in the game that uses like the baby Chocobos as like a mascot character for the tie-in. <laughs> it's all just real weird. Wait, like straight up Popeye's, like the brand. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's in Final Popeye's is in Final Fantasy Seven. Uh, well, no, no, no. The tie-in is like uh in like on the Popeye's side, but it does okay, get you like a, a materia or something. I think I don't remember. It gives you like a baby Popeye. Chocobo materia or something. Yeah, it's yeah a very strange crossover. 
Did they uh, ask you if you want mild or spicy materia? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's a. Ama- I haven't gotten that far in Rebirth, I, but I love Popeyes, and that's the, that's so weird. It's you will know that quest when you get to it. Yeah, because you'll real be bad. mad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. when I, be okay. When I get mad, I <laughs> cannot <laughs> fathom what what these chickens could possibly do. That all all of you are in agreement of like, yeah, those chickens suck. I am yeah. really mad <laughs> thinking about those chickens. You play that quest, and you're like. You didn't have to do this. Yes. You just, you could have yes. been anything else. You didn't have to do this. Yeah, the Final Fantasy history with like, because there's like Cup Noodle in 15, and there's mm-hmm. like American Express yeah. logos on the stores in 15, which always I thought yeah. was like weird. Wasn't there like a car thing like too? Uh, Mario had the Mercedes cross right, promotion right, thing. Yeah. yeah. I think this one has like the Udon cups as like a commercial. So there's like a commercial of like Sephiroth stepping through the flames and saying, I will, well, usually he says, I will give you despair. Instead, he says, I will give you Udon noodles. <laughs> and, and, I'm not joking. This is a real commercial. They didn't even I try to make it clever. No, yeah, they give cloud give you noodles or something. <laughs> yeah. But God, it should have been Sephiroth. I think, I think it there's been a Sephiroth rebirth. stepping into a Popeyes. I think there's a rebirth Red Bull commercial as well with like in that in that sort of Red Bull gives yes. you wings, right? And Sephiroth is like drawn in the Red Bull yes. style. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Shouldn't there's it be winged? Like crossover. singular? <laughs> I think the thing is he has one wing and the Red Bull gives him the other wing. Oh, okay. okay. Good. It, it's good. Now. Too. I like that. Yeah. I'm into that. That's lore like, I like that. That's like an acknowledgement of the lore, which I appreciate, you know? <laughs> it's like, and then he becomes a good guy again. It turns out he just needed that second wing, and now he's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm cool now, guys. I, I'm not angry anymore. <laughs> just tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just really tired. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, you know what we're not tired of is talking about video games, which is what we're going to do. We got uh, a lot of really big games to talk about. Uh, Two in particular. This is one of those big release weeks where we got like two heavy hitters, both coming out the same day, that being uh, Rise of the Ronin and Dragon's Dogma 2, both launching uh, Friday, March 22nd. So we're going to be diving into both of those. Uh, We're also going to be talking about Princess Peach Showtime, which I feel like you have to say it like that because it's got the exclamation point. I think, like, I think, which, by the way, we we drop the exclamation point here at Game Informer. <laughs> we do not acknowledge hey. the exclamation <laughs> point. But <laughs> yeah, I, it's it, not it, a platform we support. No, is that the same day as Rise of the Ronin? And <laughs> yes, uh, all, yeah, all no. three games come out the same day on I, March twenty second. Is okay. it? I, I I forgot to look. I probably should. I was like, I don't know if it was next week. Is it actually? Is it the twenty second too? It's twenty second. I because I made a tweet about it asking March twenty second if it was okay. Because there's so many games coming out that yep. day. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, so confirmed. there, there By you the go. Way, three, the triple I, threat. I bring it up not to edit your two heavy hitters comment. We can just leave it at two. <laughs> 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 two heavy hitters and Princess Beach. Oh, come on. Don't do that. I mean, I guess we'll get into it. Uh, your thoughts on Princess Peach Showtime as you're playing for it, Kyle. Yeah, spoiler uh, alert. It's, jump- it's just fine. It's not offensive or anything. I just, it's, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but before we jump into all of that, just right up front, want to remind everyone, you can purchase single issues of Game Informer right now on GameStop.com. They're just $7.99 each. Uh, we got our Apex Legends issue. If you're actually watching the video version, you can see Charles Hart modeling it for us right there. And you can look as cool as that guy. And, and also Kyle, too, who has one, just pulling it from the ether and... Acting like he's shoplifting or whatever no, he's like doing, ma- shoving it into his mask. Hoodie. I'm, it's a mask. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, don't go to GameStop and do that. Like, don't shove it into your jacket and walk out. It'd be, it'd be great if you paid for it because it really helps us out. <laughs> After you pay for it, you can do whatever you want with it. But you have to pay for yeah. it. Yeah. That's true. And our, our current issue for uh, No Rest for the Wicked uh, should be up lo- uh, soon, probably in the next week or so, if it's not already there. I probably should have checked that. But, yeah, like I said, great way to support Game Informer, and we very much appreciate it. Now, with that out the way, Imran, mm-hmm. you are reviewing or have reviewed Rise of the Ronin for us. This is Team Ninja's new open-world action game, their first open-world game. I believe. I actually, I did a preview mm-hmm. for the game uh, a couple months back and got to talk to the team, but this is very much, um, you know, in a somewhat similar vein as stuff like Neo and Wulong, but a lot more grounded in history. Uh, and I'm very curious to get your thoughts on it. I've started it myself, but you have finished it. I would love to know how high does Rise of the Ronin rise? <laughs> That made more sense in my head before I said it, but you, you get the idea. <laughs> it, so, so like you mentioned, it is Team Ninja's first stab at an open world game. They've done like in Wolong and uh, in Neo, it's not really open world. You pick, you pick a mission off a map and you go through like existing like 
areas to right. do like an action set piece. Or less set piece, more action. This one is clearly influenced by. I know Ghost of Tsushima is going to seem real rote to say, and like I'm saying, so, it is beyond just the Japanese influence stuff. It is they they're trying to make an Assassin's Creed slash Ghost of Tsushima slash whatever kind of game, and it it mostly works, but it doesn't do much beyond working. Mm. It does a it, it is a exhibit A in why action games should not be very, very long games. Because, like, the the fundamental parry system they have in this game of you go, you attack a guy, the guy attacks you back, you parry it, you wear down his bar, his stamina bar, like a Sekiro, like a Neo, like a Wolong, until, like, eventually you do a critical attack and repeat the stuff. That is fun, and it works well until you're just bored of it. And I think that's ultimately Rise of Ronin's, like, issue is nothing in this game is bad but nothing in this game is so exciting that i wanted to keep doing it for 60 hours which is roughly how long this game took even as towards the end i was kind of just like mainlining the game interesting so i'm i'm like i'm a few hours in like i just got to to yokohama Mm -hmm. uh so that's kind of where i'm at i don't know if anyone else has a chance to to play it but i think it starts cool like i like the idea of like is this like you know setting like the uh the, the the bakamatsu period which is like when Japan yeah. opened up its its doors to the West with uh, old Matthew Perry sailing in and saying like, "Hey, you're done being locked Which, up. You're trading with us now." Whether by you like the way, I, I like Marcus. You're a good history buff. Like you're good with history. I am not. So I was like, Matthew Perry, like what? <laughs> they, like Chandler from Friends? And I was like, that can't be like on purpose. Like I, I had to Google like I googled like Matthew Perry history, and I was like, okay, this is like a real guy. I was like, there's no way they would just sort of throw a dart at a board and come up with Matthew Perry. <laughs> also, this is not the game's fault, but it does suffer a little bit by coming this close to Yakuza Ishi- or like a Dragon Ishin. Oh, sure. By those two games are contemporaneous in terms of like story. They they feature a mm-hmm. lot of the same characters. They feature even some of the same incidents. Yeah, like, like uh, time, like roughly the same time period. They both cover. Yes, and like I don't, I didn't think uh, Ishin was necessarily that great a game. I actually think it's about as good as uh, Rise of Ronin is. But like some aspects of like you you can't help but compare. Like oh, Ishin did this battle better, or it mm-hmm. like. Or Rise of Ronin did some parts better, too. But it's like, if you have played both those games, you will feel some redundancy playing both of them. Yeah. I like, if, I mean, like you said, like, uh, uh, Ryomo, Ryoma Saka, Sakamoto, I believe his yes. name is, who was, like, a, a very important figure during that time. Like, you meet him pretty early in this game. And I think in Ishin, that's who uh, Kiri, the, the Kiryu basically is. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of interesting to see like two interpretations of that of that person, but yeah, like I, like you mentioned, Kyle, like as a history nerd, it's like cool to see like oh yeah, like this was a really interesting uh, period of time and like you know old Matthew Perry, which now you've put like the Friends actor in my head when it's even about him. <laughs> also, it's, 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 it's a game it, about parrying too, which is like the other. <laughs> yeah, that's what they Matthew call like parrying. I yeah. think that's what the bladesmith <laughs> referred to it as. I was like, you really got to get, a, get good at Matthew parrying this guy. Yeah. Could you uh, get any better at parrying? Maybe, maybe that was what the West brought to Japan, the concept of parrying. Like, he <laughs> <Yeah>. invented it. <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting for, like, uh, for the historical stuff. Like, he's actually, I believe, the most, like, well-known American figure in, like, Japanese. Like, they teach him... They teach him in schools over there in Japan, and, like, everyone in Japan knows who that guy is, I think, more than any other American historical figure from what I've learned. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I, I guess seeing him in this game is probably a big deal. But I think the narrative story is, like, cool of, like, this idea that you're playing as these these twins, uh, or at least initially, and that mm. you're switching between them, like, simultaneously, or, like, not simultaneously, but you have control of both of them, essentially. And, so um, it, is, it is basically, like, a, a party-based Souls-like. Yeah. Where early on, you you do have that twin. You do separate very early on in the game. But right. like the the instance missions you play in the game, you usually have a partner or two with you. And like I think the reason they did this is because it is very easy to in the the fog of war, the the chaos of battle, to not realize how low your health is, and you will just die. And there there are char- the other characters are there for you to take them over immediately. But also, there's like kind of a rock paper scissors aspect to. Yeah. fighting enemies 
which I didn't really dig because it felt a little too formulaic, but it did, like, it does lead to, hey, this guy has this fighting style and this, like, my fighting style. I don't. I didn't equip the right fighting style to fight him, but mm. my partner has it, so I can just do that. But also, most of the time, you don't necessarily need to pay attention to that. You can, you can go in with a dis- disadvantageous fighting style and still just parry everything and still hit them. Yeah, I was going to ask if that mattered later, because in the fights that I've had, there were times where, like, oh, yeah, I guess I'll switch to one that is, like, better for this fight, but then they'll go down or something, and then I'll, like, finish them off with the, like, disadvantageous character and it doesn't feel necessarily harder because it's like oh i know how to parry you and stuff so eh, yeah it's not like a i don't feel like i'm (coughs) against the ropes or anything like that um and i say like the combat which i guess is the the part that i was least worried about with this game because it's team ninja and at least personally i enjoy uh their action games going all the way back to the 3d ninja gaiden games and i think the combat feels good and like the pairing feels good like it's very much they very much played Sekiro was kind of what was going through my mind between like the heavy focus on parrying and having the little rope, the the rope spear that you can throw. Like I like using that to like yank dudes towards you, kind of like Scorpion. And then just the, I've, I've leveled it up a few times now where it's like, oh, I can like, I can like throw people around with this. Like you just grab them and you like swing them <laughs> over your head really cartoonishly and just send them flying. Like send I them into I, other people, which is like one of my favorite ways to kill an enemy. Uh, yeah, it's uh like I I think the combat is really enjoyable. I haven't unlocked a ton of like I I don't even think I have any other stances yet at this point. I think they've introduced the concept of like hey, you can suck up stances from people you kill. Or actually I might have one, but I haven't had uh, enough time to play around with that. But like does the combat, you know, throughout the game especially like with bosses, does it get any more interesting? So, here's the thing. So they made the conscious choice in this game to not have Anything besides, like, human enemies. Because, it's like you said, it's a historical, like, thing. Sometimes they have, like, rocket powers or whatever, but they're all human enemies. Uh, you don't really face bosses. You just face the same kind of guys over and over. And some of them, they, sometimes they have slightly more complicated attacks. Sometimes they're slightly more, like, resistant to the kind of things, kind of bullshit you pull. But, like, it is overall, like, just humans acting roughly the same with, similar sword styles and so that kind of contributes to the combat never feeling elevated at times like you do how you're going to fight a bandit camp is roughly how you're going to fight a member of the shinsengumi and that sh- to me those two shouldn't be equivalent they should like the the myth middle not mythological but like almost mythical japanese cops whatever should be better at fighting me with a sword than like a bandit should but i the combat is kind of like a weird parabola in this game where you start doing real well. And like, once you get better and better and you start getting this, like, Oh, I'm taking out these bandit camps with ease. I'm taking out these like missions with ease. I am. I feel like I've mastered the system and then enemies start getting more health and you start doing, just doing this more and more. And there's like nothing really to the open world besides going into somewhere and parrying their attacks and beating them and blah, blah, blah. And just more and more you do it. The, the parabola starts going down and down. Mm. Like, I'm bored of this. I am tired of this. I wish that this game would just do something new. Because, like, even stealth is not a great option. Stealth will can take care of most of a bandit camp for you. You can sneak up on most things. But also, any enemy that is, like, stronger, like it has uh, two chevrons versus one chevron on their <laughs> life bar, you can't stealth. You can take off. Mo- uh, half their health is stealth kill, but then you have to battle them. Which, yeah. like, at at that point, I was just I I just want to get this over with. I just want to kill this guy and which, move on. Can you? Yeah, because I I pick the the ninja class because there's like classes you can pick, and they mm-hmm. all sort of like, hey, if you want to play stealthy, you should probably play ninja. Or if you want to play aggressive, you should play I think like killer. And I'm generally like, oh, if you give me stealth, I'm gonna st- I'm gonna stealth first and then go like full on. But, like, yeah, I, every time I met, like, the, I guess, like, the leaders or whatever, you get, like, you do the thing where you backstab them and it, like, goes through their spine and they're just, like, they treat it like a mosquito bite. Like, hey, yeah. ow! Like, hey, They literally the swipe you away. <laughs> yeah, they're like, get out of here. And then you have to fight them. And I was thinking, like, oh, that's kind of lame. Like, I, I did all this work to get behind them and then you get, like, you don't even insta-kill them. And I was like, oh, maybe you can upgrade that later to where you can insta-kill this guy. Is that... Like, is that not the case? Not that not that I've seen. It might have been like I I chose like the charm and intellect build because they give you dialogue options in this game. Like yeah. in a in a theoretically Mass Effect style way or like Baldur's Gate or what like you know those kind of RPGs. But 
there's no like dice roll when you choose a thing. If you know how to persuade, you know how to persuade. If you know how to lie, you know how to lie. And like, it basically doesn't really change things. You can't like cha- change the story by uh, the dial. You you do make choices that kind of depend on what faction you go to, but you don't really change like the individual story beats by saying like lying to someone or intimidating them or whatever. You just kind of get better rewards or what things like that. So it's like it feels like a very kind of half baked system. Like they didn't really want to commit to. Oh, we don't want to make them if this guy intimidated someone i if i intimidate someone i want them to think less of me instead they think more of me and i think that's like kind of a a weakness in the game because they admire how intimidating you are like wow you scared (laughs) the crap out of me you're i like you which is like this guy's like an american naval commander he should he should not be (laughs) cool with me like being like can he understand you even like when if you're like japanese like he's like i don't even know what you're saying to me i just tell that you're angry (laughs) Yeah, I, I will say, unlike uh, the most recent Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth game, they do a better job of acknowledging that some people speak English, some people speak Japanese. There's very few people that know that, like, can cross over. Like, that mm. know the language, or know both languages. So, like, at least that's, it's lore accurate, I guess, history lore accurate, that not everyone can understand. But, yeah, it is, I, I thought the dialogue system was just very, very half-baked, not mm. Probably not even worth including. The faction system also kind of half baked. It does determine what missions you take and what allies you have, but ultimately it doesn't really matter because you end up bouncing between so many. I was pretty anti Shogunate, and then for some reason towards the end of the game, I was still doing missions for the Shogunate, and I don't understand. <laughs> like, I don't really understand why the game was forcing me into that, even though like all my friends, like I was literally taking people into battles for the Shogunate that were part of the rebel group that were trying to take down the shogunate and it it didn't Undercover. make any sense yeah. <laughs> and everyone knows who that is it was not like a weird like <laughs> anyone no one was wearing a mask no one was like <laughs> being in disguise it just the game is not very story consistent and i don't think the fact system it's interesting and it's a good it's an interesting change for them but it felt like uh it felt like an experiment they didn't really want to see through yeah it doesn't seem very dynamic again if you're taking like people from the opposite faction into this this faction it seems like the game should react and be like whoa we can't do that or that's gonna yeah. or that should just feel like it it should change something and there's like ah we don't care you're just yeah yeah uh where, where would you put it on the sort of difficulty scale like i'm not sure the best metric to use but um does it is it like easier than neo or, or wolong or it's way, definitely easier than neo and wolong there okay. are difficult spots in that game especially if you like the, like when you look on the world map, the it says like when you go to ban or look over bandit camp, it says public order is being disturbed and this is level forty two or whatever. But like again, if you're good with parrying, you can just walk through anything. So I, if you're not good at parrying, if you're just trying to like you know play this game as a you know, difficulty paced thing, it is easier than Wolong, but not immensely easy. There are uh, difficulty choices in the game so you can make it harder you can make it easier but i played on normal difficulty and i i had a handful of cases where i needed to retry a boss or a bandit camp or whatever but for the most part it was not super difficult that's actually that's kind of enticing for me because like that sort of from inspired game you know uh I, I like it does often hit a point near the end where I'm just like I'm calling in people for these bosses like I, I'm I can't do this anymore. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. So if I it's think, like if yeah. it's like a step down, I'm like oh, that might be more my speed, right? Like you know. Yeah, like you can tell because like I and you beat Wu Long, Kyle. So I like, did, yeah. But that final boss, I called in help online. You know, like that's, <laughs> that's how I approached it. Well, I was gonna say like I could tell this game was probably easier just because the first big like skill check in this game, like at the end of like what's basically the prologue it, before you get into the game is like it's like ch- challenging but it wasn't like oh my god what the hell whereas like i remember the first big skill check in wulong that that big boss yeah. guy that everyone yeah. had a hard time with you're like this is the first boss like this is like <laughs> and that was one difficult. of the hardest bosses in the game like yeah. they don't do that to you here they, they the big skill check here is like at the end of the second chapter ish or whatever mm-hmm. and like your, it's not really teacher, uh, it took, right spoiler? yeah okay all right yeah I'd it, it took me like two, three tries maybe. Okay. But like, yeah, the, the game is not incredibly difficult. I think like 
maybe it will be more difficult if you're trying to modulate it that way, if you don't get like the upgrades, if you don't try to get more medicine in your pockets, et cetera, et cetera. But it's, it is easy to make that game easier if you wanted to. And it's easy to make that game harder if you wanted to. But I, I feel like ultimately the builds don't really, don't really do a lot to differentiate you, but they do let you modulate the difficulty. Right. I've, yeah. I've made it to the open world and there are two things that immediately like, I was like, okay, this, I love this. <laughs> One is there's a button to flick blood off your sword. <laughs> that <laughs> is, is like pretty good. Cool, animation. Pretty cool. Yeah. And then also, um, this is a thing that would kind of drive me crazy in a uh, rebirth actually is, uh, w- if you're r- sprinting through the field and you press the call horse button, it yes. does not interrupt your gait. You just keep running and you jump on that horse and you, then you're going faster. And like, yeah. I love that. Like, I just, it's like, don't ever slow me down. And like, the, I just finished Rebirth, so that's in my mind. But I was like, every time I called that freaking Chocobo, I had to like stop, wait for it to show up, and then like hop on. You know, it's like, I just, I, I love the horse just like running up to you, being like, let's go. What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah, it like scoops you up, basically. Yeah, like, come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of good quality of life stuff in this game. And like, I don't think this is a bad game by any means. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just think like, it doesn't it never rises above its own ambitions. And I think that's, that's a problem when you're doing it for 60 hours, but it's the quality of life stuff is very much appreciated. I, the comparison for me is not necessarily Wo long and Neo. The comparison for me is way of the samurai. And I think people who really oh, like the way of the samurai okay. games, they will probably like, there's not enough like modularity in terms of, uh, choices in the game or what leads you to different branches or paths or whatever but it's very similar in that this is a samurai game where you get some choice of where to go you get some choice of where to do and largely the, all the other focus is on being a cool sword guy and if that's okay with you if you're someone who likes that then rise of the ronin is absolutely for you but if you're looking for a an open world that is on the caliber of of the Assassin's Creed that it like is emulating, or even the more recent Ghost of Tsushima, it's not that. It's just, right. it's just not that good. And I think like, at the, I'm I'm kind of damning it unintentionally because I do believe there's an audience for this game. It's just, it is not the mass market appeal game that they, that I think they thought it was going to be. Got yeah, it. and it feels like it is going for that. Like I am enjoying it so far, but I'm still in the like honeymoon period of the game where like you know like i haven't played enough for any of the tedium to set in and it's like i i think it's also scratching an edge of like oh i think i am in a mood for something like this right now like a just a good open world action game that isn't necessarily like an rpg yeah. uh you know like it's more traversal based of like you're climbing around and platforming and you got your cool little bird glider and you're doing that stuff uh like i said it's very assassin's creedy in some respect i mean even when you get your bird glider for the first time you basically take like a leap of faith with it like from like a very similar perch and it does remind me of like between this and ghost of tsushima and any other game that's like i don't know open world japan it's like whatever that japanese assassin's creed like they're working like was it codename red whenever that comes out yeah. like it becomes significantly less appealing to or not appealing but like less novel because they took so long to finally do it it's like oh we already yeah. got like a few of these now like even if it's yeah. like just okay it's like yeah this is this is scratching that itch i can climb buildings and this in you know Yokohama and jump off roofs and stab people from above like I- I'm I'm good so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it makes me wonder like I hope they're cooking up something really interesting with that game because I mean I don't know it's just point. Yeah. yeah but I yeah think, I'm gonna uh, yeah uh, ultimately the issue the, the thing for me is you could take the best action you could take Bayonetta or Devil May Cry yes and make it sixty hours long and it wouldn't be fun by the end of those sixty hours yeah. and I think that's kind of the issue I have with Wise the Ronin is you you they needed to change things up towards the end of that game and they just didn't and that is I understand the decision making that led to that but I think it was the wrong decision. Mm. Would you so your review should be live on the site now I believe uh, would you wind up giving it? I gave it a seven. Uh, I ended up talking myself out of making the subhead seven samurai, but other than that I <laughs> I. I get, yeah, I gave it a seven. I think it is absolutely a game for an audience, just not for the mass audience. Cool. There you go. So, yeah, go read uh, Emron's review uh, live on GameInformer.com. Uh, Kyle, you have been playing Hyper Light Breakers, the not uh, sequel, but... Breaker, yeah. Oh, Breaker, sorry, yeah. excuse me. Though there, are, um, though, though there are plural in the game. 
Yes. There, yeah. are, mul- there are multiple. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know why you're char- confused, Marcus. It makes total sense. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, it, what if I told you that it's like not a sequel to Hyperlight Drifter, but it's also sort of kind of because it's set in the same <laughs> world? Yeah. Question mark. Yeah, I had a chance to play a little bit of it. I played basically like two short, I guess you'd call them runs, and then I took on a boss fight. And uh, the director of the game, Alex Preston, was kind of on Discord over my shoulder, um, keeping an eye on me, you know, making sure I wasn't <laughs> messing things up. Uh, uh, and it's, I, I adore Hyper Light Drifter, and I wonder if he was even uh, borderline annoyed with me. Like, so how does this tie into Hyper Light Drifter? Like, does it take place after Drifter? Is it like, you know, like this language on the walls? Is that the same language as Drifter? Are we going to see the Drifter in the game? And he was just. <laughs> His response is like, I, "This isn't even You're, really a sequel. Like, it's it's just in the same <laughs> world, you know." Just heard him gritting his teeth. <laughs> yeah, on the yeah. Because I even said, "Like, does it take place after Drifter?" And his answer was so strange to me because he's like, "Ah, it's like somewhere, kind of like, man, yeah, a little before, a little after. It's sort of floating around the edges of it." <laughs> like, what does that mean? It made made me all the more uh, fascinated. But but yeah, I just uh, Hyperlight Drifter was like this two D pixelated action game that was just this like wordless sort of all vibes uh, and violence kind of game that I just really adored. And uh, this, it it's it's a 3D action game now, and yeah. it feels good. It's, it's interesting because you actually have a dash button, which is crucial to Drifter. But then you also, like I was playing on an Xbox controller, and you dash with the right trigger. But then you can press the Y button to do like a close-in attack. Uh, you know, you close the gap between you and your opponents. And, like, initially I was kind of like, oh, this is weird that there's, like, essentially two dash buttons that do different things. But, like, getting into the rhythm of it a little bit, I was like, okay, I see I see the advantage here, and I, and I, I quite like how it feels. And uh, I did okay, like, sort of running around the open world, but the boss fight that I took on was, like, I died, like, immediately. <laughs> Yeah, because like because uh, Drifter was pretty hard too, from what I remember. It's yeah. been a long time since I played it, but yeah, Drifter was tough. And I, I and like, I I'm just so excited to get back into that world, just because I like that the mood of that game and the look of it. It's just like a weird, colorful techno sci-fi world where you don't really understand the language. Ultimately, like no one speaks to you. Um, there's like words in the menus and stuff like that. The, um, mm. But otherwise, like, there's no nothing really written. And Alex Preston, the director, which I, I don't know if I said his name as we were discussing this, he said that, like, that's kind of going to maintain for this. Like, you're not going to get a lot of really overt story details, you know? Like, you're not really going to get character names. But they're going to... Drifter was great at, like, telling you a story without really relying on anything too specific and the thing is is like players kind of translated the language and figured out the story sort of over time and uh, i'm guessing that's going to be the same case here but yeah i mean it was uh i i was i'm impressed initially like uh, roguelike games which this is like not quite a roguelike it's kind of got roguelike elements and it plays a little bit more like an extraction game alex preston called it because you're like going into these worlds and it's kind of your discretion about when you want to leave and like you know, take the stuff you've earned out, and the longer you stay, the more dangerous it gets. Uh, but rogue games, if we're, if we're gonna sort of like umbrella, sort of call it, put it in that genre, which maybe it doesn't even belong there, I'm not fully sure. Those are like hit and miss for me. Like I either like adore them. I'm either playing like Returnal or Undermine, or I do a couple runs and I'm kind of out. Uh, and I'm I'm very hopeful that even just the just like because I like the world so much and the tone and the music is so good and weird and eerie like it will be one that i will i will get sucked into but yeah early access this summer and then you know i don't think they have a date for for 1.0 quite yet yeah did you get to play any of the uh the multiplayer or the co-op because the game has like was it like four people co-op? three four player co-op or three, three yeah no i just i was just on my own um just kind of okay. walked around the hub area that you'll return to a lot uh, like i said played two kind of short runs and then attempted uh, and failed spectacularly a boss fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm psyched. I have not had a chance to play this at all, but I, I loved Hyperlight Drifter, and I actually also really liked uh, Solar Ash. I actually reviewed that. Yeah, I like Solar Ash a lot yeah. too. Yeah. Solar Ash. Um, yeah. I almost wanted to ask like, if the movement in uh, Breaker felt good, because I thought the movement in Solar Ash felt so good, and I was hoping, like, like it's a very it's a different kind of game, but if any of that would carry over to, to Breaker in terms of just, like, how how good it feels to navigate like a 3d yeah. space it's uh, it's like not it. as smooth by design 
right? It doesn't right. feel like, oh, this is a step back from Solar Ash. It, it feels like they have different goals uh, with Hyper Light Breaker. Mm. But you can uh, pull out a um, like a hoverboard at any moment to kind of glide oh, yeah, around yeah. the world. Uh, oh man, get you and your three friend like a hoverboard gang. And you're just like surfing around <laughs> yeah, that world, exactly, yeah. messing stuff up. And you have a glider okay. as well, so you can jump from high heights and glide to avoid like uh, fall damage, and then pop up, you know, throw out your hoverboard and like fly around and stuff like that. It doesn't Ooh. seem like it has the speed of Solar Ash, but like Probably not, yeah. initially, I'm like, yeah, this this feels good, even if it's different. <laughs> nice, Charles. You excited for Hyper Light Breaker? Are you a fan of a uh, heart machine stuff? I haven't actually played all that much, but my my like first proper feature at Game Informer I did it was Hyper Light Breaker. So I'm oh. I'm specifically invested in this game despite having not played it. I played like an hour of Drifter I think around the time that was a classic. Like oh I played Drifter. I'm gonna look up tips because I'm not very good at this game. Written by Kyle Hilliard ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah no I. I they're also like I don't know if you asked them about this at all, Kyle, but it's like proceed. Whoa, what? Sorry, I my... cat cat alert. <laughs> my door is closed, and my cat just walked up next to me. Well, oh, he just he's, squeezed he's under the door here the whole time. Dude. <laughs> no, this dude's just... way too big to fit on the door. Here, I'm gonna. I don't know. Out. Cats are very like they're like little springs, basically. Yeah. First, so. <laughs> Charles is kicking the cat out. Wants nothing to do with him. That could be a closet for all we know. He just shoved his cat into a closet. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, it's like open world, and it's like kind of procedurally generated, but they're like crafting the chunks of it. I don't know if you, uh, if it felt like it was like procedurally generated, if it felt like they built it. Like I'm just curious of what the actual experience of that is. Yeah, I mean, it felt it felt built in a complimentary oh. way, but uh, I did specifically the the area that I went through twice was exactly the same. Okay. Like I I think the way it's going to work is like a whole world will be sort of instanced and then you can you have like a certain amount of time and attempts to go through that big open area. So sure, you're going to be going yeah. in there and coming out and then after like, you know, 3 days or whatever in world time, I think maybe that world disappears and it's it's your call of like, well give me another world or you just try to beat the three bosses in that world. It's it's all it's that kind of thing that I just don't understand yet because it's like you're not really gonna fully understand that until you've played it for like four hours or something. Like yeah. That. So yeah, we'll okay. see. Yeah, uh, you mentioned before that the the in game language like it's the same language that was in Drifter, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. So if if the the fans who translated that can go into Breaker Day One and, and start reading things on the walls and that's, stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> if you're that's fluent, what I was going yeah. to. That's where I was going with that. Of like, oh, I guess the mystery will. It's almost not existing. You're like, oh, this has already been solved. Basically, yeah. I can go <laughs> just I look so. up the translation and read this. <laughs> okay, I mean, I guess, you know, that's cool, too. I don't know if he cares about that or not, but I, I'm psyched about this. Uh, yeah. We still don't have, a, uh, I guess, like a a window for when it hits early access other than summer. just sometime yeah. this year. Yeah, summer um, this year. Yeah, so a couple months from now. Summer, summer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we said this for No Rest for the Wicked, where, like, I rarely engage with early access games at launch just because of I, I'm, i'd rather just wait for it to be done if i'm really excited yeah. for it and also i'm always afraid of burning myself out on it by the time it comes out uh 1.0 but i think this will also be on that like short list of like well i i do want to see what this looks like just because yeah, i'm such a big fan of heart machines work <laughs> i want to see and i want to see what 3d hyper light drifter looks like yeah basically. for sure yeah uh so yeah uh hyper light breakers coming summertime just in time for yeah. the the sun to come out and i believe the yeah game. thematically i played it locally here um just over discord but i think it was at day of the devs um right which imran attended recently but didn't play breaker because you hate good video games is that what i yeah that was uh, i famously. walked up to the demo kiosk i was like this looks too good <laughs> i don't want to play this uh it's like it arsenio hall in that Chappelle show <laughs> bit where he got mad about the cheese being too good at the party and slapped the guy <laughs> exactly <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was at Day of the Devs, which is the formerly Double Fine owned uh, indie game show. It is now a nonprofit, so Microsoft has no ownership of it. Uh, but like, it is a thing they used they used to do every November around the actual Day of the Dead of uh, like just showing new indie games from there. And now it's like around GDC and around Game Awards here. But so I I went there. I played a handful of 
good little indie games like a uh, game called Doggy Don't Care, which is a about being a little pug that in a house where a parrot is like egging you on to just do bad stuff. That's, that's and, like it, it, the parrot will give you badges for ruining things. Like it'll give you a piano badge for getting up on the piano and hitting the keys. It'll give you a outside badge for breaking the the glass door and get going out to the yard. So stuff like that. It didn't seem like a very full game. So I mean, it was a demo, but it like, but it seemed like it was trying to go for that goose game thing of I'm gonna cause mayhem and yeah. I'm gonna be rewarded for it. So what is that, it about that seems birds cool. and causing chaos? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I if I were, you were to ask me what ca- or what animal is the most likely to cause intellectual chaos, I'd probably tell you a bird. <laughs> yeah. Like a cat doesn't I mean, cause intellectual chaos; it just does stuff. That's true. I mean, and birds also cause like social discord. It was that whole like that stupid conspiracy theory that birds aren't real. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is that is permeating through the NBA these days. Oh no! Wait, what? Is that <laughs> a lot? No, a, a fair amount of NBA players are arguing during press for attention. I sh- I would say okay. arguing <laughs> through press conferences that birds are not actually real. Wait, who's asking that at a press conference? Like, oh, hey. Uh, LeBron, what's your thought on, on birds? And, and it, they it comes up unprompted, but since so, s- people are saying it, they are now just like, Wait, reporters yeah. are asking, what do you think about birds? Right, like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a dumb thing that I don't want to get more attention to. God. It's Larry Bird, not birds. real. we got to change oh. the batteries in the birds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I played that. I, uh, I do want to talk about one game in particular, which is... Uh, one of the strangest but most interesting games I have seen, period. It is called Dark Web Streamer. It is a text-based RPG uh, from... Hold on, I have to look up this developer. We Have Always Lived in the Forest is the name of the developer. Whoa. Uh, it is about a... Oh my you God. are a streamer. You are a, a woman streamer who essentially... You're essentially streaming to hell. Like, not nothing quite so literal. But it is like... You are streaming. At the beginning of the game, you find this gray-haired doll. And mm. that doll, you're showing off on stream. And things start going weird for you after that. <laughs> so the game is about waking up, streaming for an audience, and then going to sleep and things happen. And, like, you show this doll on the stream. And, like, you look at the chat in the side. And the chat's saying, like, what the hell just happened behind you? Like, did you not just see that? And, like, you're looking around, like, what's going on? I'm Like, this is a... a text-based game with art so you're like it's not a first person horror game or whatever like that but you were you're reading this text and then like the chat starts breaking down into the word stream 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 over and over again you're getting emails that are saying like hey you've leveled up to be the, the next level of screener and then you'll get another email saying i'm watching you and like it's stuff like that uh as i was playing i got uh, i went to sleep one night and i woke up and the name Libby was written in blood all around the room. And I decided to get up and do something about this, not call the police because the police aren't going to do anything. I fa- made that mistake before. Uh, but as I got up, I realized the blood was coming from my arm. Uh, I got up and went to the kitchen, followed some noises. There was Libby sitting on the ground with all the blood around her hands. And then she attacked me. I, I failed the skill check. And when I regained consciousness, I was just back streaming. Uh, there was one night I went to sleep, and when I woke up, w- a guy who has been emailing me and has been in my stream chat is just standing there next to the bed with pale white skin, wide eyes, and a giant wide smile. Uh, I passed a skill check for that one and attacked and threw a glass at his, at his head. His head collapsed. Uh, and then it asked me, do you feel guilty? I said no, and it said good. And like this, this game is basically that it is being a streamer in a world of horrors. Oh. And I was so enamored with it that I cannot like, I just want every, that ga- game's line was so long <laughs> because people did not want to stop playing. They were just there just wanted to see what ha- was happening next. That's why. So I, that sounds I, I pulled up, I pulled up the steam page as you were talking. So I wanted to just have a, a, a visual thing. And like one, the, the promo art is like terrifying. Cause it's just like yes, a, a close up of like really yeah. scary yeah. eyes. Yeah. But as you were talking, like, cause I was like looking at the screenshots and I guess like the, the trailer was like on autoplay 
and all of a sudden it started playing in my headphones like boom and i was like I, like I don't know if, <laughs> if you're watching video you might have seen a slight jump but I, like, it was like perfect as you were describing this horrible thing like the game scared me <laughs> It's, it's, um, it's all text. It, you're not like a character walking around a room, right? You are not. Okay, it's, it's, it's text like and art. A text yeah. adventure. Okay, cool. cool yeah, cool. like this one looks like in the screenshot, like a bunch of like character portraits and just like weird like UI, I guess of the of the browser or the computer. Um, that sounds awesome. I... Yeah, this art is horrifying. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. Like, absolutely in, in a very good way. It is yeah it is terrifying. It reminds me of that book that we all read as kids. But I don't remember the name of, but I had like just yeah. the absolute most terrifying art for uh, a children's book of horror stories. Very hungry caterpillar. <laughs> yeah, it was like scary stories to tell the dark. Maybe I don't yeah. know. Yeah, remember, Charles, it was you like, said that like, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it, it reminds me of that. And yeah. like, I don't know. I I am absolutely going to play this game when it comes out, and I'm probably going to do it in the most well lit room I possibly can. <laughs> no, yes, Imran, lights out. <laughs> do it right. Do it right. <laughs> do it right. Lights out by yourself. You what? You have to stream this, like stream the stream game, and then chat can mess with you and be like something. That, that's you. too inception, incept, inceptiony. I think I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to even like risk. I, I was one of those kids that did like the Bloody Mary thing in the in the mirror, mm-hmm. and I was mm-hmm. like, I remember doing that as a kid, and then leaving the room like. I know nothing's gonna happen, but also I'm real scared something's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, you're like I messed up. Have you? Yeah, right. that giant Marie is gonna. Why come did to you life. do it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people egg, kids egg each other on, so hey. I I got egged on to do that. Can I ask anyone in sh- here in this call, have you ever done the Bloody Mary thing before, and then, and would you do it now if if you were asked to? No and no. I do it every morning. <laughs> That's your teeth I get my cup of coffee. I walk into the bathroom. And just, I just, do it every time. just talk Bloody Mary for fun. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm always trying to get Beetlejuice to show up, but I don't know if that's like the same thing. Beetlejuice? Uh, Beetlejuice. Oh God! Beetlejuice? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm kind of like with Imram, where I'm like, I know this isn't real, but also. Why tempt fate? What if that it kind is? Of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, am I going to be the person in the horror movie that I yell at? Like, no, you idiot. Don't. Why? <laughs> like, what do you get out of this? Either nothing happens <laughs> or everything happens. <laughs> it's, it was a thing for me where it's like, if you do this thing, you might die. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to do it. No. <laughs> yeah, you I'm never respond interested. to those, those YouTube interested. comments that are like, hey, if you don't share this comment, you're going to die in like a seven days or whatever. <laughs> I, hear, I read those and I'm like, I don't negotiate with terrorists. You know? gonna, I can't entertain yeah. this thought or else I'm sharing all yeah. my whole page is going to be nonsense. If I forget it happened, then it never happened. Exactly. There, we go. there we go. Yeah, that is true. Birds aren't real. If I forget they're, they exist, <laughs> then how real are they? Changes the batteries. It's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. You know, I guess they're solar power technically. That's oh. what I mean. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, you, you, what bird? Good. There you go. Sorry. Checkmate. Birds. Draft me to the NBA, please. Uh, <laughs> all right. Anything else from uh, Day to Dev that you want to shout out, Imran? I saw a bunch of cool games. Like I saw Kind Words too. Uh, that game. Oh looks yeah, really neat. that's right. Yeah, I, uh, I saw that. Which did you remember Kind Words? I thought I think that was really cool. Way yeah. Back when it came out. Yeah. This, this game looks like actually a. It's weird to say it's a mechanical improvement on Kind Words in terms of like this seems to it's going to be actually more engaging. It's a weird just, game to put a two next to. Yes. But yeah, like that, I thought that game looked really cool. Uh, I played a interesting. It wasn't much of a game; it was more of a tech demo. But I think it was called like Haste World or something. Haste something. Hmm. And the game is basically about running real fast, jumping off ramps, and trying to land in a like modulate your jump in a way that when you land, you land on the down slope of the the ground. So you just keep running fast. Oh, like and a like tiny the wings game, kind of. Thing, yeah. Right? All right. And like I like locomotion in game and like video games and this felt like good locomotion yeah that's the landfall right that's the they did uh totally accurate battle simulator Mm. um they did stick fight the game i'm a big i'm a land i'm a landfall yes (laughs) you're you're correct yeah the game is called haste broken worlds from landfall that sounds cool awesome well yeah did they have the car game where you have to not get hit by the car yes they also had a I did not get a chance to play it. The line was right. Frogger? No, it's like, like no, real, it is, it's like real you, life. You, like the person. Camera. Yeah, and yeah, they are, make like a fake street. I played it when I was at Day of the Devs at uh, the Game Awards. And you have to try and like get across the street without this, like the car 
like hitting you there's like a meter on the screen and it fills up i have a video of alex doing it where he metal gear crawls across <laughs> the <laughs> the the crosswalk to get so to the other side it's like Wait, vr it's like, yeah it's like a connect kind of thing or it's like a connect kind of thing yeah okay. connect like, would be but it's just using yeah. a webcam or it's using some sort of camera because like you can see yourself when you're going through it on this big screen it's outside um oh, and there's like a bunch of street cones set up and then when you get to the end if you make it there without like the meter filling up, you weren't hit by the car. Oh, and then yeah. it's like, do you want to send this data to like AI driving cars? And everyone I saw was like, no, no. <laughs> it's like Nick Arcade. Do you remember Nick yeah, Arcade? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. yeah. Okay. It is like that. And there was also an experimental game next to it, which was a you shake a soda bottle and then you put it down. And the soda bottle, how far it goes up in game is by how hard you shook the soda bottle in your hand. <laughs> so, like, it'll blast off, like, as if, like, the soda bottle was exploding and going into the sky. All right. Uh, so I mean, there's one that, that in real is, life. Yeah. So what there's you guys are saying like, is, like, we're circling back around to, like, we peripheral connect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, that, yeah. Like, is that generation officially old enough to be, like, I'm going to make my own weird, like, <laughs> I'm making shovelware a game? game. <laughs> I, I hate that. I'm into that. That was my first <laughs> console, and I'm, what, 23? So that's true. Give it, there was one that was years. Years. Yeah. I mean, Generation Charles. Charles. Charles has officially made Gen us feel C. old, which he's allowed once per episode. <laughs> 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 once uh, per episode, I'll, I'll check my tally off. There was one that was like a, a controller hooked up to proje- a projector. The projector was projecting onto a picture book. And like every time you scrolled the screen, you changed to the next pop up book pa- page. So like the level was the pop up book in front of you, and you were controlling a character on top of it. That's cool. Yeah, so like, it, it, a lot of cool stuff like that. Day of the Devs is cool. If you get a chance to ever go, you should go. Yeah, yeah I don't think I've ever been to one, unless I'm forgetting one. But yeah, I, I mean, I love watching the the streams that they do. Yeah, uh, and the video presentations; those are always fun. So I, yeah. I know at least the San Francisco one is open to the public. Uh, I don't know about the Game Awards one. It is. Okay. okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I have already wish listed a dark web streamer, so thank you for that. Um, I'm going to close this tab because those eyes, the way my second monitor is positioned, it's like, like looking right at me like I can't not see it in my peripheral. And I, and I don't like that because I'm just going to close that. Um, but yeah, that thing sounds awesome. And, and I need to check out those, uh, those other games. I need to be bear witness to the, uh, the Wii Renaissance is what we'll call this now. The, the Wii Renaissance. Rena- yeah, I wasn't gonna say it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, well, I mean, uh, Renaissance is uh, Latin Italian for rebirth, so it could be the Wii birth. Ooh, Final Fantasy Seven. Final Fantasy Seven. Seven Wii yeah. Birth. yeah. Well, all, Wii all of our brains did the same exact. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the Wii port that they're working on right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, that could be cool. A Buster Sword Wii remote. Oh, oh the steel. Hold on a second. Yes. <laughs> 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 Reason, Kyle? Or I'm saying, I'm saying, you're onto something. Like, we need to be careful. We might, we gotta, we gotta keep these ideas close to the chest. <laughs> that might be what the Switch Two is. It's just the Wii Three. <laughs> the Wii. Whoa. <laughs> we, uh, they, they should call it Switch Two colon Wii Three. Wii. <laughs> <laughs> and then Final Fantasy Seven Wii Birth launch title. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love this. Uh, well, Imran, um, I to leave you have to depart very soon uh mm-hmm. but before you head out uh feel free is there anything you want to plug and where can people find uh you online and, and what you're doing right now uh you can find me online at imran Z-U-M-G, and like as far as plugs and what i'm doing right now that'll all get on a twitter account or blue sky at i believe imran.com i think is do we start saying blue sky stuff now is like have we reached that cultural per- permeation yeah I'm, we say I'm it every more. week yeah yeah okay yeah all right then on blue sky at imran.com i believe i i it's been so long since i registered that i actually don't remember you'll find me i'm sure there's not that many imrons there <laughs> <laughs> it's fine uh yeah that's me cool oh i'll plug awesome. for you imran we, at some point soon i I don't know exactly when, but you'll probably have an interview with the Rise of Ronin, Rise of the Ronin yes. uh, developers on GameFormer.com, probably. Ideally, at Embargo. We'll see <laughs> we'll how see. that goes. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And yeah, once again, uh, check out Imran's uh, Rise of the Ronin review on GameInformer.com right now. And yeah, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to be jumping into all things Dragon's Dogma 2. We'll be right back. <laughs> 
And we're back. And we're going to turn our attention towards the plaid-hatted Jesse Vitelli because you are the envy of the internet for a certain crowd oh. because you have not only played Dragon's Dog <laughs> I'm, just, I'm laughing at for a certain crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Put the qualifier on there. Put the qualifier on there. Listen, I don't want to speak for everyone, but um, but you have not only played Dragon's Dogma 2, you have finished it and yeah. have written a lovely review for us, Thank which you. might be live now, or I can't remember if it's like Thursday yeah. or Friday that Embargo lifts. It will be um, live. No, it, it'll be live. It, okay, so yes, you have, it is live. Uh, you know, sequel to a game that came out, I guess, the first time it came out. What was it, like, 2012? Yeah, 2012. Yeah. yeah, and uh, God, one of the most passionate fan bases I can think mm -hmm. of in those last 10 years. Like, people really love Dragon's Dogma and have been begging for the sequel forever. It's finally here. Jesse, can you tell us how good or how bad it is? Are you, are you ready to, to break hearts, or are you going to make people more excited? Where are you at? This game is great hey, hey right. we did it Woo. we did it <laughs> we made this game together yes. <laughs> you're we welcome yeah. <laughs> uh, for, it, it's always like a challenging thing to do like like make a sequel 12 years later right like so much has changed like design philosophies have changed like we're living in like a post elden ring world right where like that kind of upended a lot of open world design same with like tears of the kingdom breath of the wild um and dragon's dogma 2 like doesn't care it's like no like we have our shtick and that is like making a somewhat obtuse open world where we want you to go figure everything out we're not interested in you know signposting every little thing about the game and right. i was gonna really, say because like, it's, it's obtuse it. i was gonna say it's obtuse in its own way not in a from yeah. software way right and, and i think yeah. i think two maybe leans a little more into the from soft sort of camp of like being obtuse in a way where mm. it is like you're not like having to read item descriptions to really understand the story of this game. Like this game has a, a narrative. This game has a through line, but so much of it is just, just go explore, like go off the beaten path. Like, like take your time. Like you're going to find, you're going to stumble into more activities than you are going to like do quests in this game. Like uh, you go to Vernworth, which is sort of like the first capital city and the amount of times I was just walking through the streets and some NPC kind of like literally bumped into me and was like, oh, hey, can you help me? Like this this kid is missing. And I'm like, oh, OK, where, where was he last seen? They're like, I don't know. It's been days. And I'm like, OK. And like I didn't get a quest icon. I didn't get like I didn't even get it marked on my quest log. It was just like, oh, I guess I should go find this kid at some point. So I was like asking around town and some NPCs were like oh yeah that's that's dylan he's he's stuck in the well and it's like oh well, why didn't you tell me that and then it's like i gotta go find the well and then i go down there and there's like a dungeon down there and you go do a whole thing and then it opens up a, an actual side quest later but if i just ignored that npc i would have never seen any of that and the game never said hey we're gonna put this on your map we're gonna put this in your quest log like the game is not interested in doing that. Mm. Uh, it really puts the onus on you to do the detective work and talk to the people of this town and listen when things are said to you. And remember, I took so many notes. Anytime something happened, I was like, okay, uh, ox cart that goes at night. I had no more information to go on than that. And I'm like, all right, maybe I'll find it eventually. And then eventually you stumble into it and it unravels this this thing. I mean, you were and literally kind of writing down game. notes. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah. Like, is that, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Is that like a tip like, almost? Like, take, take like, your like, own notes? Like, yeah, I took my own notes. And like, I, I take notes when I review things just oh, in yeah, general. Yeah, course, but yeah. like, to a certain point, it was like, it was like, I can't remember all of the information this game is, is giving me. Like, right. Because uh, if there's no quest log, then. It, it becomes where like, ambient dialogue can actually be important to something later on and so it's always like oh i remember somebody mentioned something about the vault and it's like I, I don't know what any of that means but eventually when i get to something called the vault i might need this information um and so it's like really fascinating in that way it's really good at making you feel small it's really good at, at making you have to think that everyone in this town has a life and they are all doing their own things and you are kind of just someone who is willing to help and where a lot of people aren't and that's kind of your sort of like push through the game. Uh, are things it's really on a, fascinating in that way? 
Are, are things on a timer at all? Like, I didn't play the first game, but is it like, if I don't do this fast enough, like, if, if I didn't find that kid you mentioned, is he going to, like, die? Or, yeah. Or, okay, so you are, <laughs> yeah. like, there's, uh, like, an invisible <laughs> timer for things in the background. So the game... So, so the things that the game does put in your quest log, um, sometimes they will have an hourglass symbol next to them, and that will that will be the game being like, we're not going to tell you how long you have. It could be days, it could be a week, it could be a couple hours. Like we don't okay. know of in game time. Um, and then sometimes, like I um, I had a quest to go find something, and I had to go like tail this person, and it wasn't it was marked in my log, but it didn't have the hourglass symbol. So I thought, oh, I don't I can do that whenever. Like I'll come back to that. And then I realized it was no longer in my quest log. And in, in my completed tab, it said discontinued. You took too long. Like these people have oh. now found a new route to get to wherever they were going. So you can't tell them anymore because they're on to you. They've caught on to what you were trying to do. Oh. And I was like, oh, so sometimes the game has quests that you don't even know are going to expire. Um, so it really it is a game where you will not see everything your first playthrough. Like it is intentionally designed for you to. You know, replay it. There, there's like a new game plus, so you can just bring all your stuff back and start the, the game fresh and go back that way. But uh, it's it's really it's just like a really interesting design philosophy because so many games I feel like we just came off Rebirth, which is like, hey, we're gonna like put everything on your map. We're gonna make sure you have the opportunity to see everything. You can go back and see things if you've moved on a zone. This game is like, if you don't see these things when you see them, you probably aren't going to unless you go back again. Um, is is that and, ever like like stressful to you? Like, oh, it's I'm... incredibly stressful. <laughs> okay. um, I am somebody who gets like choice paralysis in most games, uh -huh. where I'm like, oh man, like Persona, right? It's like, oh, who do I spend time with? What do I do after school? I don't know. Uh, and this game, at at first, I was like, oh, I'll just do these things as I go. And then, like I mentioned, as I started to realize, like, oh, these things are on a ticking clock. Not everything, but some things. Uh, it became okay. What is most interesting to me? What do I think I'm going to find the most uh, exciting to to chase? And sometimes you just hit a dead end with something, and you just move on. And sometimes it discontinues, and sometimes it doesn't. And it it really puts the onus on you to just explore the things you want to look at. Um, and the map is incredibly big, like maybe too big sometimes. Okay, <laughs> but it. A, a lot of the game is you, you kind of stay in this capital city where you could do your main quest and there's a lot going on, but then you're always going outside of the walls to explore. And that's where you'll find the monsters and the large griffins and cyclops and, you know, sphinxes or, or whatever. Um, and so your vocation comes into play. So there's four different classes you can pick from from the start. You have fighter, uh, archer, mage, and thief. I played as a thief like most of my time with this game because you get a cool rope spear and you can like yank people towards you and then you can like critical attack them. And so it was really Ooh. useful for like the harpies that are flying around. I would just yank them out of the sky. I'd be like, I'm not dealing with you. Just well, that, get, get out of here. That's probably the cl class I'm gonna, if it wasn't clear from when we were talking about Razor and I'm a sucker for if you give me a thing that can yank people towards me. I, I love that mechanic in action games. But <laughs> so. are you yeah. jumping around vocations? Is that my understanding? You can. Okay. Yeah, so um, you you pick a vocation and then you can level that vocation up, and that's how you unlock like new abilities for that uh, class. Uh oh, we lost Charles. L oh no, what did what happened? Charles what? hates vocations. <laughs> He's going to go change his vocation right now. He's going to come back as someone else. We're back. Something weird happened. Uh, some some person came in and and cast a spell. Uh, someone uh, changed vocations to mage and made someone disappear, <laughs> but then brought them back. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, as you were saying, Jesse, uh, vocations, Dragon Dogma 2, <laughs> what can yeah. we do with them? So, so you start off with four, right? And then as the game goes on, you can do quest lines to get other ones. And you can change them at any time. Uh, so I started out as a thief for free. The no game cost. is like experiment, explore, do what you want to do. Um, but the, the way the vocations work is they all start at level one. And you get like an ability that you can map to like a quick like a quick use button. And then as you level up, you start getting more. So like the thief had abilities that were like, like I said, the rope snare was one of them. Uh, the ability to do like a parry and get an instant kill on smaller enemies. Um, there was like a smoke screen ability. And those all happen as you level up by just using the vocation more. But the the other part is you get is call, are called augments. And those can, you basically have a set number. So I think you have like eight of them. And every time you level up a vocation, you get another augment. And these can be things like, increased stamina or like increased health um one that i had that was incredibly useful was 
enemies target you less so you pull less aggro from just any of the enemies and those are persistent so even if you switch vocations you can still have those augments equipped so mm -hmm. it kind of incentivizes you to switch around vocations to get all of the augments so then you can start to craft like builds almost so i had like maxed out thief so i had all the thief augments and then i switched over to like archer and i started picking up archer augments which were like you do more damage to an enemy when starting combat if they're unaware of your presence so that worked really well with Thief, where it was like I would sneak up on an enemy and then like jump on top and like do some damage and I'd get some some extra hits in and and do some some more damage to the the enemy. Uh, and so the game incentivizes you to switch around a lot. And then when you get to that first town, it kind of gives you one of the first what they call advanced vocations, which the first game had like sorcerer and warrior, which are just sort of hybrid classes almost, where it's like a warrior is kind of somewhere between. Uh, a fighter and a different vocation and it focuses on great swords versus just a sword and shield and has different attacks and abilities and stuff um and this game introduces a new one called mystic spear hand which might be the coolest class in the game it's a it cool sounds name. cool that's a cool name yeah you yeah. dual wield like a like a two-sided spear uh spear so you're kind of like almost like a jedi at this point you can pick things up like with like levity you basically have the force what? And you can throw enemies, and then you can also teleport to them and like continue attacking them. And it's it, it's so cool. So, you can shoot wait, like can, lightning out of your hand. You are speaking like, Charles's so language. Cool. He is like can, Charles can is about to be, lose his mind. Yeah, like can you be well, that at the start? No, no it, it's it's oh. pretty deep into the game. Okay, I was gonna um, say, why wouldn't I just start with that? <laughs> I I was like looking at this game. I was getting ready to start it, and honestly, I was like. I, I've mentioned this off camera where I was like, yeah, I'm kind of interested, but like a lot of the recent big RPGs haven't been speaking to me. And I saw a clip of what combat with the Mystic Spear Hand looked like. And I was like, oh, I'm playing this right now. <laughs> yeah. Booted it up and it wasn't one of the options. And I was like, well, now at the very least, I'm going to be playing this game until I can unlock Mystic Spear Hand because that's like all I care about now. It It is very deep. Like, like those advanced vocations are like very deep into the game, like mm -hmm. almost kind of near the end. You could get them earlier if you like know where to look and stuff but mm -hmm. um i think a lot of people are going to be immediately be like how do i get mystic spear hand this is the coolest thing mm -hmm. um so th they're like there's like a natural escalation in the vocation system of like getting cooler and cooler stuff like there's a vocation called like warfarer which just kind of uses all of the different weapons so if you want to like fill up your pack with a bunch of weapons you could be switching between weapons and doing all sorts of crazy stuff um and then magic archer is really cool because you're basically a mix between a mage and an archer at this point and you're like imbuing your arrows with like frost and fire and uh the ability to like poison enemies and doing all this like crazy stuff and you can shoot like 20 arrows at the same time and uh so there's a lot to play with there and the game encourages you like i said to swap between them uh and so when you go out into the open world either you're you're tracking down a quest or you're kind of just exploring uh, there's a lot of like emergent systems that'll happen so i was fighting a, a group of goblins very early in the game and i was like man they're really just they're they're taking some time to kill there's like a lot of them they're hopping out of the grass like some of them are, are covered in like green camouflage and they'll hide in tall Wait, grass what? and you'll be walking down the path and they'll just <laughs> jump out at you oh no uh, tactical goblins fight and then a lizard with a spear shows up and starts poking at me and i'm like where did you come from and then a griffin swoops down with like five health bars and i'm like i don't know i don't know how to handle this so i start trying to fight the griffin and then the griffin takes off and decides i'm done i'm just leaving just leaves the fight entirely and now i'm left like my pawns are all down i'm having to go over and like revive each of them and like these these goblins are hopping out of the grass at me and it's it sometimes like like things can go from zero to 100 incredibly fast like you can be top of your game like you know doing everything you need to do and then one thing will happen and you're like well i guess that's the price of adventuring um <laughs> i guess that's that's what happens uh and so it, it, it's like it's a constant push and pull every time you go out into the open world and trying to you, you know it, it, in my review i talk it's like a risk reward system right it's like the further from town you stray you have to come back because there are very limited fast travel options in this game. You basically can travel by ox cart, which you have to do from a town, and that ox cart is going one place. Uh, so you have to know, like if you're in Vernworth, the ox cart to the north goes to the, the checkpoint town, and the ox cart to the south goes to Melv. Hmm. And so it's like you have to remember, okay, which ox carts go where, and then those can get attacked. 
So while you're riding them, you can doze off and it'll be like your more traditional fast travel. But somewhere along the way, goblins might attack the, the cart and then you have to wake up and like do a goblin fight. And sometimes those goblins will destroy the cart and strand you in the middle of nowhere. What? And then you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so that's one version of fast travel. The other are these items called fairy stones, which are a incredibly limited resource. If you want to buy them from a shop, shopkeepers usually have one of them and they're 10,000 gold, which is especially early on a lot of money it's like that you'd be spending your entire money to fast travel one time and only certain towns have these crystals that you can fast travel to mm-hmm. so even then your options are still even like even more limited are there uh, uh again not having played the first one like are there mounts like horses that you can ride or anything like that nope you're just on foot you're on foot you're hoofing oh. it um oh. mm. and so yeah so when you want to go to another town either it's been put on your mar- your map because you're doing a main quest line or something or you're just exploring like you really don't know how long you're going to be out and anywhere you go if you need to come back to town you need to take into account that you also need to then travel the same distance back to town so mm-hmm. you're really having to think about like what am i bringing with me um you don't like lose any of your stuff if you die but um your options are when you die it's load your last save or load your last in rest the last time you rested at an inn um and there's only one save file in this game so like right you're not able to like save scum your way through any of this like uh you are having to make deliberate choices every time you leave right. town and where you, you want to go and what you want to do you can save any time though right like you don't have to go to a save station yeah, or anything you, like you that you can save you can save whenever you want um okay and dragon's dogma 2 also does this thing where every time you get hit by an enemy it doesn't just decrease your health, but it also decreases your maximum allotted health. So if you're traveling a lot, eventually you will only be able to be healed up until a certain point. Mm. So there were there were times where I was so stranded that my health my health bar was literally like two inches long. And that was the most I could be healed because I needed you have to either rest at a campsite or rest at an inn. And campfires you can find around the wild, and if you have camping supplies, you can rest there it's the same as an inn like you get you get a full heal you can cook food which i don't know if y'all have seen this but they did not render the cooking animation they actually just filmed steaks like being grilled and that oh, is like the cooking weird. animation like it's live like action yeah i thought it's, that was just like crazy. a trailer dude that's what? so funky no, no wait did they do that that was like hey this is like we ended up just like buying steaks and, and filming them being cool. <laughs> That's great. Someone was making lunch one day and was like, eh, we could probably we could put this in the game, right? <laughs> we could save some money and maybe just put this in instead. And it looks And then they were like, looks- Oh, then we can eat the steaks when we're done we're done cooking them. So Hey, steak dinners. Um, time time passes in this game. If things in your inventory will go bad. Like if you have fruit or food, if you don't eat it soon enough, it'll rot. Not a lot of use for it in your pack after that. So it's it's just all these small things that constantly add up to it's, like a bigger, a bigger adventure. It's very survivally. I didn't realize it was uh, as survivally as I I I, get, I I assumed this a lot of this was in the first game or at least yeah there was there was a good a good amount of this like like having your lantern and having to make sure you carry oil for your lantern because if your lantern runs out like that's it you can't really see at night. Um, going out at night just like Dragon Song One incredibly dangerous. That's when like more difficult enemies come out. You'll start seeing like skeletons and zombies and wizards and ghosts and all sorts of dangerous, <laughs> dangerous entities. I was walking through uh, the forest at night one term, and I just kept hearing giggling, like children giggling. Oh no, no, like, no, 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 no! This, no. this is terrifying. And no, then I found no, out no, it was no, like no. these two ghosts that were just like kind of like roaming around doing children giggles and i was like oh. no jesse this is because you wake up every morning and do that bloody bloody <laughs> hairy, yeah. in the mirror thing <laughs> actually well, yeah the giggling wasn't in the game it was in my own <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say that reminds me of like one of the scariest things i've ever seen in a movie is that scene in blair witch when they're in the tent and you hear the kids outside and you see their hands pressing out on the outside of the tent and they just like bolted into like the woods in the middle of the night i that still sticks with me so like in, it's like a weird ptsd of like oh in the woods at night can't see hear kids giggling for some reason it's like nope <laughs> <laughs> like i'm just running running back to town or whatever um god that's that's exciting and like in it, it, intimidating too like just the stuff you're describing but yeah. like it, it, it's like it sounds like a a challenge i want to to embark on because I, I mean i do like survivally stuff and like i guess i like i i, I like challenging games um 
and like that combined with just how fun and like uh seemingly varied the combat system is with like the vocation sounds awesome this is, might be the wrong question to ask for Dragon's Dogma, but it's something that I always wonder. Because whenever people talk about the first game, they either talk about how cool it is to climb monsters and the pawns and just like, hey, this game's like really hard and weird. But no one ever talks about the story. And I always like yeah. assume like, is the story just like not worth talking about? Um, or is it like so... secretly good? And I wonder like, is Dragon's Dogma 2 more of the same of like the story's there, but it's not the main event? the setup i what i will say is i think the setup for the story is very generic fantasy it is it is a lot of you are sort of the, you're the arisen right you're the, the sort of the chosen one of this of this world of course uh, and there is there are some political power struggles with the queen and not wanting to acknowledge the real arisen because then her family would like lose power and so there's there's this like power struggle through the the hierarchy of of that and a lot of the game is like, okay, well, we need to show the queen. We need to show the people to, that they need to believe in the chosen one. And, like, we will overthrow the the current, like, royal family. And we will put the true ruler in power. Where that game goes is much, much more than that. I like, can't really talk about that. But mm. I think the story in this game is very good. Oh, I think good. Ultimately, where it ends up, it's probably my favorite thing I've experienced this year in a story. Really? Um, that being said it is very backfilled i think like you like, like if story is sort of your main hook for an rpg i don't think you're going to get a lot of like main narrative stuff that feels fulfilling to you until you reach sort of the last 10 15 hours of that game is um, it the narrative version of a of a drumstick like ice cream cone where like all the good stuff is at the bottom you know, you <laughs> yeah get through and of. get to the cone yeah you, know, you get to that um, chocolate a bit and that's not to say that the stuff that's there early on is is bad because i i think it's like enough it's serviceable to get you to the adventure part of it but i do think that like the first to middle chunk of that game is a lot about sort of finding those side stories and finding the interpersonal like relationships you can like make with the, the npcs of this world rather than like the grand overarching plot which is kind of just like like i said generic fantasy mm. uh but the game from the very beginning sort of starts to leave you breadcrumbs that like hey there's like more going on here there's more mystical stuff happening like there this is not just about political power struggles like there is more and dragon's dogma was the same way like i mean the game the game starts like dragon's dogma starts with a dragon literally like taking your heart out and eating it and making you the arisen and like this game still has all of that like that's not that didn't go anywhere they didn't get caught up in like a game of thrones plot line or anything like that like they still have all of the the magic elements and this game is also goofy i feel like i've been talking a lot about how serious this game is and how stressful this game is this game is incredibly funny like you still <laughs> ragdoll everywhere like it's <laughs> janky in the way that like a 360 ps3 era game was like they didn't lose any of that they and in fact they embrace it in a lot of ways like i got caught up in a fight where there was a tornado uh, like some enemy caught, cast like a tornado spell and my body was flying around that arena like just ragdolling <laughs> everywhere my pawn was named Sephiroth too, and looked like a, <laughs> like a discounted Sephiroth. Like, like you can have so much fun yeah. with this game. You can change your pawns, like, but they call them inclinations, right? Where you change their demeanor, their personality. So my pawn Sephiroth too, is kind of a jerk. He was very straightforward. Like he he was just like, hey, why are you always running everywhere? Like I'm tired. Like can you slow down a little bit? Like you classic the game Sephiroth. Was, was very like very very. <laughs> It embraces its silliness and it embraces its its kind of rough edges. Mm. And the thing you always worry about with a sequel is like, oh, are they going to kind of make it a little more cookie cutter and sort of in line with modern day things? And they were like, no, part of the charm is that this game is a little a little rough. And like, we like that and we embrace that. And Dragon's Dogma 2 like keeps that. Like, yeah. it's, it, that's its core. The director said, I have not played a video game since we launched the first game. All righty. Uh, anything else that needs to be said about Dragon's Dogma? The floor is open. Yes. I'll, t I'll take the floor. Me. Yes, my pawn. I love podcasting. Um, <laughs> pawn casting? Pawn casting. Ooh, Ooh I like that's that. something. Um, I I was thinking, so I, I mentioned I like picked this game up, and for some reason it just really clicked with me. I think the main thing was that the combat was so flashy. Um, I think I was expecting a lot of the, like, 
I don't know why I was associating it with the Souls. I think it was just the fact that it's kind of inflexible in certain ways and like the medieval fantasy. I think I assumed it would be kind of like slow plotting combat. It's like, nah, you're as an archer, the first thing I unlocked was the ability to like jump kick and backflip off every enemy. Yeah. Um, but the thing I thought was interesting from when I was playing it and from what Jesse was saying is like the point, the first things you were talking about was like the points of friction. Like the, the immediate thing that you were like, the thing that makes this game interesting is like, you can't fast travel. Nighttime is so scary. If you die too many times, then like you can't even heal yourself. Um, and I just think it's really interesting. And the one of the things I heard my brother say recently, which I think he was mentioning that some like streamer he watches said it, but like, you know, it's a good game when you play it and all your friends have like war stories of mm -hmm. like, gosh, the t I, you told us the one about like getting ambushed by all the goblins. <laughs> I'm like, that's such a great story. That's so great. My only thing was like, I barely played it, but I like you can, there's a button to like climb on big monsters but you can also pick up little monsters. And so mm -hmm. I was like keeping my distance with my bow. I was playing an archer and I was like, oh, I can just throw these goblins off a cliff and they can't do anything. Um, and that's just great. I don't know. I just love the, the, the emergent systems from like, because you create all these stress points, the moments when like something funny or satisfying happens, it's like 10 times more entertaining because you know that like, that specific circumstance couldn't have happened to someone else. That's cool. When you throw and, goblins off cliffs, I, uh, do they have a good like fall scream? Like, are they like, ah! <laughs> I, I <laughs> Discord really cut you off there. It's really <laughs> good. Um, I don't. I didn't throw them that far. I threw them like maybe like a six foot drop. Oh, um, <laughs> <Okay>. so <laughs> not I'm their thinking time. You, like yeah. I, I thought you like Mufasa these like <laughs> goblins. Yeah. I would have liked. It's gonna to. be a little dark, but I threw a lot of dead goblins. Oh. Like I would kill them and then use their corpse as like a weapon. Oh, nice. But, so they could scream at that point. They're just goblins. <laughs> goblins aren't people. <laughs> wow. But the the game like uses those points of friction a lot, and like the environment is set up that way. Like. All, almost all of the bridges in those games are destructible. So you could like lead a group Ooh. of enemies onto a bridge and then shoot with your bow or something the bridge out and they'll all fall. Like what kind of bow are you shooting that destroys you, like, a little bridge? Explosive. I arrow. think the question yeah. you should be asking is why aren't these bridges built strong enough? That's, I guess that's, that's yeah, the that's why. Yeah, well, like, those flimsy bridges. Just around. shooting like, that was, like arrows the, and the first like pause screen tool tip it gave me <laughs> was after bridges are destroyed, they'll be repaired in a few days. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh, be, yeah. The town will be really upset with you that this keeps happening. But <laughs> um, and and it's it, like, like combat is very flashy, but like one of my like gripes with this game is that I, I Charles, are you playing it on console or PC? PC, uh, PS Five, sorry. PS5. So I've been playing on PS5 and it's got like this uncapped 30 FPS thing going on. Mm. And I think mostly it's fine. Like I think there'll be people out there that are like, why can't I play at 60 FPS? And it's like to each their own. But uh, it's really noticeable when you're like doing some of those larger scale fights and you have a sorcerer or a mage who's casting some like big spell and suddenly the frame rate just tanks. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not the worst thing because I think everything else this game is doing is so impressive and interesting that I, I'll i take some frame hits when occasionally it's not a big deal. But, like, if you are someone who is sort of, you know, like, very you, – you like your frames, right? Uh, you will – this game does not perform perfectly all the time. There are some pretty big points where that game is just, like, chugging along. Yeah. Just There's a lot of people in a town or something. It's – you can tell. And it's, it's never – because sometimes you'll like look up at the sky and suddenly it feels like it's 60 fps and you're like oh right like my brain has to like now rewire that like the frame rate is constantly going up and down mm. yeah um is there a day one patch that you know of i'm wondering if this is like not that i'm aware of okay i was like hoping like maybe this is only a pre-release thing and it'll be ironed out a little bit uh, at launch but I guess. i'm pretty sure they came out ahead of time and kind of have talked about this already with the console versions because I've, I've seen a lot of chatter on the internet about the uncapped 30 frame rate and like if that's going to be a problem or not mm. um and like yeah it's a little bit of a bummer but like i think in the parts that it distracts from like the rest of that game is still so cleaned and so nice that it's it doesn't really bother me but your mileage may vary on that and the other little thing is with fights is i mentioned that griffin that swooped down and like how cool of a moment that was the game relies on that a little too heavily as you keep going like 
I think that Griffin moment started to happen every 30, 40 minutes to me. Okay. To the point where it was like, I'm tired of fighting this Griffin. The fight is not changing. It's not escalating. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing anything differently. All I've gotten is really good at fighting the Griffin because the, the game is kind of like, because the Griffin will fly around and you'll be able to see it at all different parts of the map. And like the enemy variety, there's like that middle section of the game. You're fighting a lot of the same stuff. And then eventually towards the end of the game, you get some more interesting things to fight. But it definitely, it was definitely wearing on me at a certain point where it's like, oh, another Griffin, oh, uh, another Cyclops. Okay, I've done this before. Nothing has really changed all that much in this fight. I've gotten stronger, which is cool. I can take these things down faster. But it's it's more of a chore than it is like it, exciting at that point in the game. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe um, the Griffin just doesn't like you. Maybe it's just <laughs> got it out for I you. I was thinking it's a family of Griffins looking for vengeance. <laughs> they, yeah, they're like you killed my brother i'm coming for you and i'm like i've killed 35 of you how big is your family like <laughs> like nurse joy they just Pete, keep coming peter lois <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, peter it's, for me it was a tuesday moment for you there you guys know what i'm talking about right? street but, fighter movie right where she's like you killed I, my no my idea. family and bison's <laughs> like oh I, that day was very impactful for you but for me it was a tuesday Oh, like, I thought for, <laughs> there, I thought you. I don't know why I, I thought of the um, the Batman Beyond meme with uh, Blight, where he's like, um, <laughs> I I "Do you have Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down <laughs> when someone <laughs> accuses him of like doing something horrible to him?" Yeah, which is another. That's meme. Jesse in Dragon's uh, Dogma Two, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, Dragon's Dogma Two out Friday again. Uh, oh, Jesse, uh, your review. What did you wind up scoring it? I gave it a nine. Ignite. hey there we go i think i think that game does some incredible things and you know like i like i mentioned with the complaints you know it's not a perfect game if you are but i i think that that is a game you you should keep an eye on because i i think if you if you like the first one and if you're just looking for a new meaty rpg you got it it's, it's there awesome i'm excited to dig into this like i missed the train on on the first game uh between that and dark arisen just never got around to it but i'm gonna be here day one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join the, the Dragon's Dogma uh, bandwagon, just be one of you guys, and I can't wait for us to bellyache for another decade for the third game to come out. Yeah, you just got to finish Like a Dragon and Rebirth <laughs> and Persona 3. <laughs> I haven't even started that one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, busy, busy year. Can't yeah, wait for April because it seems a lot slower for now. For now. For now yeah, Someone will Kyle. throw a love, another Bellatro grenade into the middle. Of the <laughs> exactly. That's what and I'm waiting for. That's like the secret thing in between all those other games yeah. is like me still playing a lot of Bellatro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. That's good. Uh, Kyle, I've heard that you took it upon yourself one night. Maybe you did it alone. Maybe you did it by yourself. Uh, you got into your car. You drove to your local theater. You uh, went up to the ticket okay. stand. You said, one ticket, please. And you moved all the way up to the nice VIP balcony because you're bougie like that. <laughs> and you sat down. You picked up those little binocular things so you could see the stage. And when the curtains pulled back, Princess Peach came out dressed up like a kung fu master for some reason. <laughs> because you have been playing Princess Peach Showtime. <laughs> hey, that was, a, that was a good setup. Good transition. Yeah, I feel like in the beginning of the episode, I was like being like weirdly harsh. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Peach. <laughs> I was like, yeah, there's two big games coming out this week. Princess Peach ain't one of them. The thing about Princess Peach, which is like, uh, uh, honestly, like I is, is I think it's like kind of a, a boring sort of you know review, quote unquote. It's like it's it's fine. It's just fine. Yeah. It's like inoffensive. It's cute. Um, it's fun to play as Peach. Like she goes through a series of different like costumes, and uh, the different costumes like connect to different levels and they give her different abilities and like they're all there there's some that are good and there are others that are like just fine like there was like the detective one where it's probably like the weakest one where it's a lot of just like walking around and like putting up your magnifying glass to things and and just sort of acknowledging it it's it, there's not really like any platforming or anything to it and then there's stuff like the ninja one is a lot of fun. Like, I liked the ninja one. But there weren't any that I was like, oh, I wish the whole game were like this. And nor were there any where I was like, oh, this is terrible. Please don't make me do this again. You know, it's just, it's all just kind of like, it's like a step below Kirby, but still a step above, like, you know, 
non Nintendo platformers, right? There's still that sort of polish and Nintendo charm that's that's just always kind of exists, and it's it's just okay. Like, which is like I said, it's like boring, but it's just okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like it, it's solid. Like, yeah, it's a, a, a solid little game. Yeah, I uh, I gave it a seven five, and like one of the another sort of a complaint is like it's it's at it's at the same time sometimes it's like harder than I think it should be. Like, don't misinterpret that as me saying the game is hard. It is not hard at all um, by design. Like that's that was on purpose. But sometimes I there are like little sections where I'm like, this just feels like more challenging than it should be. Like if this is someone's first game, I feel like they would really uh, bounce off against this one little part. But then at the same time, it was like it was it was like too easy on occasions to the point where it's like wasn't fun. And like it doesn't it never quite found that perfect, which you know is hard to nail middle ground of like this would be a great game for like a new player who really likes maybe saw Peach in the Mario movie and was like got really excited about her as a character. And like maybe they're not really into games. Maybe this is like their first or among their first games. Like there are times where it's like this would be perfect for that, but then there are times where I'm like, I think young kids might might get frustrated with this, you know, which is which is tough. It's a tough uh, line to walk. Has your uh, has your daughter played it? I, I'd be curious to see. Like, you have a child you can test this with? Is no, I mean she's also she's above fit, right? Like, I'm not not like she's better than it, <laughs> but she's, <laughs> she's 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 at a different tier of gamer, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? She's yeah. she's she's playing Stardew and Roblox and Fortnite occasionally oh, and stuff like that. Like, this this is for like maybe like it's 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 so funny because even as as a parent, you kind of forget. Uh, how kids are at the ages they were immediately because everything moves so quickly. So I don't really remember what five-year-olds are like, but I think it's probably in that zone of like four to eight-year-old kind of zone maybe for players. I, and like, like I said, I could be missing the mark there. I was hoping you well, would continue the, the gamer tier analogy. It's right. it fascinating. Like, is she like an, a B tier, a C tier? And you're saying this is for like a D tier people? And where are we on the gamer tier list exactly? We're all S, triple S, each of us. All right. The old s- <laughs> superior. Is, uh... superior, superior. <laughs> How much uh, reading is there? I know that's always like a yeah. No, that's a good a good point. There is there is no required reading. Like things just you, maybe if there's text on screen, like you can things will just sort of happen, and you're like, I don't know what they're saying, but I know what to do next. With the exception being the detective costume, or I, mm. yeah, costume. I guess you they would refer to them, where that does take a little bit of like you have to talk to three characters and figure out which one is lying and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that those th- couple of levels would require some some reading, yeah, yeah. The first character's lying, by the way. It's always the it's first always person you talk to. <laughs> always, always. Gosh, yeah. I think there was a Rebirth mini game that you had there to pick was. the liar, and I think it really was the first yeah. one. I think. Yeah. Was it a chicken? Is that why? Oh, wait till you guys see this chicken mini game. You, Which oh, they really say? want to see Which it. Is this from Popeyes. <laughs> <laughs> How much does? Uh, showtime play into like the theater element is it all like on stage or are you like getting to at least like go around the theater like is there um I, i'm is there any of that interesting part i'm glad you brought that up because that actually is something i really like about the game is the th- sort of theater aesthetic you're not going like behind the scenes but like okay like one little touch that i was like oh that's so smart and charming is that like there's always a spotlight on peach right like you're always as you're moving through every level like she's in the spotlight which is just like a fun little touch and you always like exit stage left to finish a level and stuff like that Uh. and like you know it everything looks like a set and if there are characters that float you can kind of see their like their, their strings coming from the rafters and stuff like that like that's all very consistent and smart and cool and and Ooh. well done yeah i like i like that if, part of it a lot if you fail like if peach dies or just fails does a big cane come off the stage and like yank her away <laughs> that'd be good a trap door no. <laughs> i'm i'm <laughs> This is guys. This People is, throw tomatoes on the stage at her. Like, oh, you blew it. This is a this is a triple S gamer bragging right here. But uh, I don't think I ever failed <laughs> playing uh, Princess Peach Showtime. Yes. No, I believe uh, you have to say. Uh, oh, is that right? I'm sorry. We're the uh, snake, yeah. snake boys. Gamer. The snake boys. Yeah, purple cobras. Um, uh, but yeah, Jesse... there's like a, there's like a tier of like Mario's at the top, and then I would put Yoshi and Kirby, and then like Peach if that if that sort of metric makes sense in terms of like 
the platformers, the Nintendo platformers I like, you know? Like, oh, but that you like. I thought you were going, like, difficulty here. Oh, yeah, difficulty too, honestly. Yeah, Mario on top, then Yoshi, then Kirby, then Peach, yeah. You know, you know I would probably, this is a weird tangent, I think I would put Donkey Kong at the type. I think the Donkey Kong Country games are harder than any yeah. Yeah. Mario game. Uh, they're also better than all the Mario games. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, I a, guess that's a triple S hot take right tro- there. Tropical Freeze... Look, that's a good, that's a good game. Look, I'll take that over game. Wonder any day, ladies and I gentlemen. I mean, yeah, I, th- wow. I would too, actually. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I don't know why I didn't include Donkey Kong and sort of thinking through that metric. I guess because I, I sort of think of him almost as like a spin-off platformer, you know? Even <laughs> though those, then, those yeah. games we, are we, like... The, the movie established they live in the same world. Yeah, I mean, all the, a lot of those games are developed not by Nintendo. Hal does the Nintendo, Good Feel does, did Peach, and also did... Um, Yoshi and Yoshi. stuff, and then, but I still think of Donkey Kong as like retro and rare. You know, I feel like yeah. it belongs to them more than Nintendo for. Yeah. No I mean, there reason. hasn't been one since them, so yeah. it technically is still theirs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, nice. Um, I have yet to download that demo that they put out, uh, which was going to be. I, I wanted to try it out because uh, I am interested in this game, and I'm, you know, like this is about what I expected it to be. Just your sort of a uh, reaction to it. I was like, yeah, that sounds, that sounds about right. Yeah, um, it met expectations. I, I, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, it's still cool. I, I'm really curious to see how this sells, mainly because I want to see like if there's any trickle down effect from like the Mario movie and like her portrayal in that. If that got people really jazzed about Peach in like a big way, where they're like, oh hell yeah, like it's got the <laughs> The Anya Taylor Joy rub, you know? yeah. <laughs> and and like Mario has done the theater aesthetic before, right? Like Thousand Year Door, like that's like a, a mechanic within right. the battle system, yeah. right? Is like the audience members like throwing I, yeah. stuff to you. Yeah. So like I always want them to like go a step further with that because I think that's like a really fun thing to play with. Yeah. I, I, like Super Mario All Stars does too, doesn't it? Because it's got the yeah. stage like, where you pick the yeah. Well it's funny characters. my mm-hmm. review, my first my scrapped intro was like, this isn't the first time Peach has, you know, performed in theater in a platform and I was like, wait, I'm thinking of Mario three. Like she wasn't in Mario Three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I like scrapped <laughs> I scrapped all that. But but yeah. I guess you could technically say the movie, like this isn't the first time she's been in the theater, in the theater. <laughs> yeah, in the theater. It's, it's not a too late. Kind of uh, theater. The, the reviews online by the time you're listening to this, but you know, and and yeah, in I haven't the... read it yet. But if you sent that to me, that's that would have been my edit suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I was gonna say, I know Jesse, you're like a theater dude, right? Yeah, I if... work on Broadway. It's my day job. Oh, that's yeah. cool. I didn't know that. That's what I thought. And also, that's sick. Um, <laughs> and also, I have two questions sick. related. Uh, number one, what is your favorite musical? And number two, what of that musical would you add to Princess Peach Showtime if you had that power? Oh, okay. Uh, let's think about this for a minute. So I'm very fond of the original production of Into the Woods. Mm-hmm. Oh, that okay. is like that was like one of the first shows I ever saw. A little bit of backstory. Don't have to make it long. This is like a family thing. Like I like. We are generations of stagehands on Broadway, so Wait, I'm like really? fourth generation. Yeah, that's cool. Um, wow. So like, my grandfather was president of the union. My father currently works. Uh, we're all working on Hell's Kitchen right now in uh, the Alicia Keys musical that's about to open up. Uh, and so Into the Woods was like the first show I ever, like my dad ever took me to as a kid, like working to work with him. Mm. And <laughs> there's this really silly moment where he used to have to go behind the this like brick oven on stage and pop a loaf of bread out. And it would just like fall onto the stage. And so it was during, I forget which number it was, but I want that in Princess Peach Showtime. I just want like <laughs> stagehands in the background, like okay. moving scenery oh. and like popping bread out onto the stage. Like you, and like you could heal with that or uh, something. I, mean, I don't know if there's combat in this game. Yeah, there is. It's like you just barely see someone's like elbow as they're yeah, moving dressed in all piece. black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. Like the, the kind of, yeah, like the kind of way like they're in the morph suits almost where it's yeah. like, oh, and they've got like the, cool. the mocap balls on. And it's like, what are they, what's going on? Back it's got to be toads, right? Like it's just got to be a bunch of toads back there. Just in black. Aren't yeah, like there like another guy in this game? Like, they introduce a new the toad-like. Yeah, the Thetes. Which I guess is short for theater kids. Theaters? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> is that like true, slur. Jesse? Were you called a feet growing up? <laughs> yeah, that's. I was called that my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Awesome. Well, yes, uh, Princess Beach Showtime. Kyle, your review live on the site. Yep. Again, uh, check it out. 
uh big friday the big three friday uh excited to really play all three of those just because you know video games hey not not to be confused with good friday which is the week after that this is big friday this is big friday or yeah. great friday or, whatever one you yeah call it. better friday <laughs> big, <laughs> better. <laughs> is that blasphemous the better yeah. trying to like yeah. throw good friday under the bus <laughs> like well we had the better friday last week this is just good <laughs> um let's change gears for a bit uh here's a thing that's been going on if you've been following uh either like the website or just our socials you might have seen that we are currently ha or have been having a, a tournament of sorts uh mm -hmm. where inspired by march madness which is uh i believe still going on i, I only know that because it's march so i assume it's still happening <laughs> <laughs> i don't watch sports <laughs> but we decided to do kind of our own spin on it and we've done this before where we uh made a bracket and we got a bunch of really good games and we decided to do a tournament where the readers decide the greatest game of all time based on the games that are we've chosen to throw in there <laughs> uh this was largely brian Shay's idea yeah, and, yeah uh, no, as well as uh it's cool work of production so shout out to him for all the work that went into this which uh fun fact a lot of work went into this <laughs> more than you know yeah yeah um yeah. and uh but yeah over the past few weeks uh, fans or readers have been voting on it. Uh, we are currently at the time of recording on round four, I believe. Yes. So we're getting down to what we have like what, one more round. Yeah, quarterfinals. What's yeah. Uh, like? What is the? What would be the actual term for that? Uh, but yeah, I I don't know if you if anyone has the original list of like all the games that were on it from yeah, the start. I do. Yeah. I have the it's on the side. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. can see what has won so far. And um Yeah, some of these were I don't know, have you guys been voting on it every time? Some of these have been like oh, really yeah. really brutal for I'm, me. I'm just I've been learning about this right now. I'm I'm looking up this list. Uh, I gotta see what's been going on. I've been not only have I voted on it, but I've not to toot my own horn here as an SSS tier gamer, but <laughs> I've been doing it ethically where if it if e if any bracket has a game I have not played, I do not vote in it. Even if I've played yeah. one of the games, oh, really? I will not vote on it just because I played that game. Because I don't want to. I'm trying to keep it pure. I can't say, oh, this game is better than this game I've never touched because I don't know that. I guess that's true. So, I, there's a, not a there, lot on here I haven't played you, though. I'm sorry. You there's, feeling, a, there's some well because you're an SSD gamer in this, Kyle. in this tournament. Oh yeah. No, what's, there were, what's the biggest upset just, you think, Jesse? Okay. Well, I mean. The Final Fantasy X fan in me is very upset that it lost to Arkham City, though I do respect that Arkham City mm. is a very good game. Uh, yeah, or should we just read off all the games that were originally there before? <laughs> um, yeah, we we could. Yeah, I was wondering because it's it is a it's like a just list so people of know 60 what, who was... games, uh, which I don't like. I I would rather just sort of highlight to me. I don't know if you guys like pull it up. Like, I, there's a bunch that I like couldn't believe. Like, I don't know if that's like the Bloodborne and Tetris together. That's that was a, that a, was a round a one. Bath. Yeah, that's yeah. a bloodbath. Oh, who won yes. that one actually? Tetris. 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 Tetris was a late addition. Which, like, to that some list. people were yeah. very upset about that, but honestly, I would have voted for that too. Voted for Tetris as much as I love Bloodborne, but like to me personally, I think Tetris is probably the closest to a perfect video game as you can get. Yeah, <laughs> so. man. Pokemon Red Blue getting knocked out in the first round. Bye. That's, that's a tough one. Lost to Snake Eater. That's yep. That's correct. We were which, accurate. Which, like, I, again, it's, it's hard. <laughs> Undertale losing to Half Life Two. Like, these are great games that's getting pitted against yes. each other. That's a hard. That's a hard call. God. Oh, yeah. nope. if this wasn't clear, by the way, this is. I, I know I said it, but this is. These are readers voting. So, yes, like, you can't yeah. get yeah. mad at us. This is you guys doing making these decisions. The one, <laughs> the one that I, like, had to vote for. I. I the one that really made me go like, I don't know if I could choose this, was Metal Gear Solid and Breath of the Wild. Because like Metal Gear oh, Solid is like so important to me, and I love Breath of the Wild so much. Mm. I I ended up going Breath of the Wild, but man, Ooh. that was that was tough. <laughs> I I just played Metal Gear Solid, and Breath of the Wild takes that one. Well, you, but you don't have the same you lens. Didn't play no, it right. You're you're That's only a, a single ass oh. gamer when you play. <laughs> See, I didn't say wow. I didn't say that. Yeah, I, think, I think I got I got the Komodo Dragon score, yeah. which is there's much better. Scores yeah, no, than that. and that is that is totally it comes down to that sort of thing that it's always so hard for us to debate when we have these kind of lists. I mean, this is a, a, a um like a user uh, voted list, right? But like 
there are so many instances where it's like yeah like breath of the wild metal Gear solid it's a great example of like that game is like really important to me and it was a time and place i played it when i was young and like its influence is undeniable but like yeah today if you're i'm not i'm gonna put breath of the wild in front of you i'm not gonna put metal gear solid in front of you to play it's more fun in 2024 you know and that's kind of like uh like you know we our term is best game ever and we kind of i think left it up to fans to interpret what that means because i've seen people on both sides say like oh well like i'm voting based on influence versus like some people saying like well i'm just voting based on like my own personal like do i like this game more or not and like i don't there's no wrong answer there which kind of is what makes this fun yeah um as much as people want to argue with each other and say that their (laughs) their opinion on the subject is wrong um but like i I have found myself, at least the way I've been approaching the voting, is maybe a little bit more on the, like, is this fun? Like, if you put both in front of me right now, which one would I want to play? Cause even if it's something like Metal Gear Solid, like, yeah, it's an older game, but I can still play it now because I have that nostalgia of growing up with it at the time. So it's like, yeah. it being old isn't as much of a bother. But, like, for me, Breath of the Wild was easier because I was like, oh, I know I know for sure that I, that's one of my top ten favorite games ever. Yeah. Like, and I was like, as much as I love Metal Gear, it didn't make me feel the same things as Breath of the Wild did. <laughs> so I was like, that was an easier one. I've noticed that the the games that are, and this hasn't now happened often, but the games that wind up getting mashed against each other that are in the same console generation, those are the ones I kind of put a lot more like, oh, okay. So like, Because it feels like it's, I guess, more fair yeah, in yeah. that way. And it hasn't happened often. Because again, it's, you know, randomized brackets. But like, one that really had me struggling, I believe it was Bioshock. And The Last of Us, uh, like Ooh. the first Last of Us. Right. And yeah, I, yeah. I really yeah. sat there staring at that one for a bit. I'm mm. like, what'd you go with? Because again, that's a tough one. It's like same console generation. So I can't use the excuse of like, well, one's old and one's not or anything like that. Um, what'd you so go with? Marcus? I, I got to review. You got to. I'm trying to remember, you actually. Can't I'm lob like, that grenade out I was, there. I believe I picked. I might actually have to look it up. I, I, it was like region three, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember because I was so back and forth. I want to say I picked Bioshock, but even I'm not totally confident because I was so. It was such a last minute. Yeah, like I'm just gonna vote tough. for this and, and just you know walk away, like not think about. It. I gotta just gonna rip the bandaid off. But again, that was like that was one of the toughest matchups. I think uh, another one. It was a uh, Red Dead Redemption two and The Witcher three. Oh, uh, nah, that one's that, easy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for maybe for you, I I adore Wait, both Kyle, of those games to which, death. Which what did you pick? Is the easy one for you, yeah. I have to say it out loud, you guys. It's Red Dead Redemption too. I, oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, I mean, were you a big Witcher three guy? No, I don't really like Witcher three. See, yeah, 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 I, 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 I think Witcher three is one of the best RPGs ever made. Yeah, so I love that game. No. <laughs> so. I'm, Red Dead Redemption two against Castlevania Symphony of the Night to start is also like, oh <laughs> man, I yeah. really love Red Dead Redemption two, but Castlevania Symphony of the Night is like still fun to play today. Like I would still put that in front of someone. I think oh, so. Man. Yeah. The it's, the one that surprised me in my favor, I guess you could say. I mean, we really ultimately, I don't have like a dog in the race. I'm just excited to see who wins. But um, Shadow mm-hmm. of the Colossus and World of Warcraft went head to head. Yeah. And I was like, oh, sorry, Shadow of the Colossus. I love you so much, but there's no way you're coming on top of that. And it, But it did. Shadow of the Colossus beat World of Warcraft in the first round, which I surprised me, even though I, I, I am a Shadow of the Colossus. Like, that's what I voted for. Um, See, I didn't vote for it because I've never played WoW. I think I think that's probably also a big generational thing. Because yeah. no I don't think yeah. anyone my age ever played World of Warcraft, but they remade Shadow of the Colossus a few years ago. I was going to say, they were only like a year apart from each other initially because wow was like oh four when it launched and shadow yeah, was oh five so right. they were very yeah. close together <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah i think also game informer readership generally it just sort of hues a little more console centric in general sure you yeah. know um but yeah that's it's it was super it was super fun to vote and see what's winning like i um yeah Te- metal gear beat tetris like that was a funky one uh um, took Snake got the L shape and a chokehold and put it to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Elden Ring and Metal Gear Solid Three was another really tough one for me. I ended up going Elden Ring on that one. Oh, that was easy for me. Yeah. Again, I love Snake Eater, but Elden Ring's in that rare like this game is too special to me. <laughs> can uh, we can we go through this round and say what we would vote? Oh yeah, because we're oh, down like, to like four yeah. at this point. Right? Yeah, there's only yeah. four four choices here. Yes. Yeah. Well, take, I, I did wanna... I did my Witcher Red Dead. I, I'm curious what you guys how where you fall on those that one there. 
I chose this was another one I stared at for a while because I, I hold both games very, very close to me. But I chose Red Dead. And a lot of it had to do with the story of like I love Witcher storytelling, but I Red Dead 2's like it got me at so many points, like emotion like genuinely emotional. And yeah. I, I think that was the one thing that squeaked it over the edge. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Jesse and uh, I, Charles, what about you guys for that for that mashup right there or matchup rather? I I'd probably go Red Dead, but if I'm being honest, these are two games I don't think about a whole lot. Okay, All right. they're kind of like like I I enjoyed my time with both of them, but like I don't know if I feel strongly about either of them. But I think I would go Red Dead. I I think it's like yeah, there's like real sickos for both of these games like people are really this is easily like pick out a crowd of 100 people this yeah. each I'm of glad them I'm a someone's sicko. favorite game that's what the stands for um i i have i have not finished either of them i have honestly not played all that much of either of them but i got a lot farther in red dead 2 than i did in the witcher 3 and i know that witcher 3 is kind of like notoriously has kind of a opening curve that people have to get over but i think i would vote red dead 2 just because it was I don't know. I had it clicked with me a little better, even though I didn't finish it. Yeah, yeah. If there was a scene where Geralt had to sit down with a nun, <laughs> then maybe that would have that would have gotten uh, Witcher three over the edge. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see where they how they write that quest. <laughs> That's probably one of the books somewhere. Uh, yeah. The next one is uh, Ocarina of Time in Baldur's Gate three, which uh, it's very easy for. Kyle Zelda Hilliard, oh. they call me. Uh, this, Ocarina of Time this... is my favorite game of all time with a bullet, <laughs> like forever. No, you have not. <laughs> have, you, have you? Have you even started playing Baldur's Gate? Because I know it's not your. Yeah, game. I started it, and it was one of those but... things. Where I was like, yeah, this, this, this is it's not for me, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you did, it looks like you did great work here. <laughs> <laughs> this is my hardest one. I really, think, final three. I really like Ocarina of Time. I think whichever one of these wins, I will be more mad that the other one lost, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I, like, thought, I thought you I were, like, really... shoe in Baldur's Gate. I didn't think that was even, like, a debate for you, but I shows what I know. I, I think I've, like, mentioned this once before of, like, I think Ocarina of Time was the... F it was, like, the first Zelda game I got really into because I got it on Virtual Console on the Wii. So that was, like, I've played that game a lot of times. Um, and then it came out on 3DS, and I was like, hey, they remade that game from my childhood, you know, three years ago. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I do think that that's like, I, I I make fun of old games a lot as a joke, because I think I think they're still good, and I fully value anyone that, like, I think there's no reason to not factor nostalgia into why you enjoy a game, as much as I like to poke fun at that, because it's like, you can't take that out of it. Um, Wait till you get but, old, Charles. I know. <laughs> um, but, like, Ocarina of Time, I'm like, I do think it holds up. Like, I yeah. do think it's really good. I, I think if that was a first game for a lot of people, then it would work. So I think I, I, think I would vote that one, wow. honestly. All right. Yeah, this one was actually really easy. It was Baldur's Gate without question. And a lot of that is it's, yeah, it's the same. nostalgia thing. Like, I, got, I beat Ocarina when I was in college. Like, I grew up with it, or I was, you know... I grew up in the sense that, like, I was a kid when it came out, but I didn't have an N64. So, at the time, it was new. I only got to play very limited amounts of it at friends' houses. Like, basically just the opening Kakariko Village stuff. But I never beat the game from start to finish until I was in college. So, I didn't have the same, like, it didn't wow me the same way. It was more sort of, like, the historical appreciation for it. Uh, of, like, oh, yeah, this is, I'm glad I finally beat this. As a Zelda fan, has played other Zeldas, I'm glad I finally have the one that everybody really likes under my belt but it just i just don't have that like life-changing experience with it whereas like Baldur's gate is it's Baldur's gate and I, I i adore that game and that did have like a more relevatory like wow this is mm -hmm. this is really realizing the role playing fantasy in a, in a way the genre maybe never has <laughs> you know so i'm sorry link <laughs> and jess you said Baldur's gate as well right didn't you yeah, yeah. I, something you'll learn is I'm a, I'm a sucker for player freedom and just kind of being able to do whatever you want. If you can manipulate the systems the way you want them to, uh, that's like my kind of stuff. And Baldur's Gate 3 like does that in spades. Yeah. Like, wait, wait till they make a new Zelda that has a dialogue tree where Link can choose how to grunt uh, when he talks to people. I am, Link doesn't just get to talk, but he gets multiple dialogue options. I am <laughs> so good on that idea. Let's let's keep that away <laughs> from Zelda, yeah. please. 
Yeah, like I want to be a, I want to be able to steer how people react to Link and like him. I want I want social links. And social, links. Social, yeah. social links. Social links. Let's do uh, it. All right, guys. How about Elden Ring v Skyrim? Elden Ring. Elden, Elden Ring. Ring. Elden Ring. All right, that one is easy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is no disrespect to Skyrim. Like Skyrim, I yeah, put, I was great. near obsessed with it when it came out. I, it's one of the games I, I might, I think actually Elden Ring and Skyrim are the two games I put the most amount of time into in my life, around like 200 something hours. Oh, really? That's um, funny. Yeah, like I love Skyrim, but it, Elden Ring sort of like improved upon that fantasy that Skyrim gave me of like being in this big open world where it feels like anything's possible. And then Elder Ring was the better version of that, but with infinitely better combat. <laughs> it's like genuinely yeah. scary to be there, but in a way that's like mm-hmm. fun and cool. Yeah. 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 It's a world you don't want to live in, but you're living. Yeah. In. Like yeah. you would never, you don't want to spend time there, but you can't stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you, you wonder how people le- even live to adulthood in that world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, and then the last one is Last of Us and Breath of the Wild. This Breath was, of the Wild. This was also easy for me. Yeah. Breath of the Wild. Of- and again, I, I adore The Last of Us, but Breath of the Wild is in an S tier of games where like very few games have ignited that childlike wonder in me the way that Breath of the Wild did. Yeah. So yeah, I'm Breath of the Wild. Did I? Need, I, yeah. I don't think I even need to say that out loud, did I? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like you're like the free space on the bingo card. Of like, <laughs> we don't know what Kyle's gonna be. So Kyle, it's just, what's this is What's going to happen if it's Ocarina of Time versus Breath, Breath of the Wild? Wild. I, I, the nostalgia in me will go Ocarina of Time. Mm. I, I like Ocarina of because I know some people are kind of like, oh, you know, it, 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 my favorite game depends on, you know, what's going on in my life when you ask me. Sometimes this is my favorite game. Sometimes it's my favorite game. Ocarina of Time is my favorite game forever and always, <laughs> it depend, no matter how I feel, because of just how profound that first experience of playing it was like i equate it to like a religious experience i remember (laughs) being in the ocarina being in the temple of time and pulling the sword out and like walking out of the temple and feeling like it's like i can't roll that would be disrespectful to like what is happening here like and i've i've really rarely had an experience like that in a video game it's the whole reason i'm sitting here on a podcast talking about video games is like you went to you went to the Temple of Time. And you caught the Holy Ghost. I tr- truly, <laughs> like, yes, that, like that. You were praise dancing in the Temple of Time. That's how much of a religious experience it was it, for you. Yes, absolutely. Yes. You would get baptized there if you could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I guess it kind of looks blocky now. So I don't know. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> well, you played a 3DS remake. It's 3DS better. Yeah, this is great. Um, did we go around the horn? Did everyone? I don't. Did everyone? Pick uh, did you say Charles? I. It's it's Breath of the Wild, but that is also it's a tough a one. hard one for different reasons for me. Last of Us, I played like I didn't have a PlayStation when it came out, and I got a PS4 in like 2018, I think, and I knew very little about it. I was like, oh, I'll check out this game that people like a whole lot. And that was also like a I just had no idea what I was getting into and <laughs> played it in like a week in the summer in a room by myself and left like the very end scene, and I was like. I can't. I don't have anyone to talk to oh, <laughs> this God. game about. Yeah. So it was very. I was glad the HBO show came out because then I could watch it with my partner and be like, "Now you get it." Yeah, no, that's that how was, I feel. Especially not to pull the parent card, but especially as a daughter dad, that was a that was a oh, sitting yeah. in a dark room, just mess of tears <laughs> kind of game. As was the sequel for yeah. me, but um, yeah, Breath of the Wild, uh, a different, but. Uh, mm-hmm. Better also in experience? tears for some reason. <laughs> yeah, different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Tears of the kingdom. What? Uh, uh, Jesse, oh, did yeah. you say? I'm sorry. I feel like I, I didn't. Did I get yeah, Breath of the Wild. Okay, cool. 100. percent Yeah. And yeah. I like everyone. I love The Last of Us. I, I've had my moments with it, but the, the sheer amount of stuff you can do in Breath of the Wild is still incredible. <laughs> like to this day, people are doing new stuff that's just so wacky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did we have any other like I forget the full brackets? Were those the only two Zelda games? Uh, Breath of the Wild and uh, Ocarina. Wind Waker Link has been past. knocked off. Yeah, Link to the Past got knocked off. That's but, right. We, That's right. Because like we By were, Ring. we tried to be as, like, you know, we didn't want to put too many of the same franchise in there. You know, not to say that yeah. like you know, both Last of Us games don't necessarily deserve to be on the list but like zelda was one of the few that it was like well a bunch of zeldas are gonna make it you know 
Um, so yeah, I think yeah. it was. Was that the most represented series, Zelda? <sighs> it's gotta I think, be. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy has three, I think. Okay. Maybe four. Yeah. And Metal Gear has just, is it just the two. Is it just Snake Eater? And yeah, I think it's the one and three. And then Zelda was Breath of the Wild, Wind Waker, Link to the Past. Oh, maybe that was okay. Maybe it was just in Ocarina. Ocarina. Oh, in Ocarina. Yeah, Ocarina. So they have four. Yeah. yeah so Zelda yeah. is the most represented. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like you said, like even just determining like. Because we only had like sixty or whatever, how many it was? Sixty four, which is yeah. like sixty four, which is not. It sounds like it's a lot, but then when you're trying to figure out, like, well, wh- what are we basing this on? Do we put a bunch of old games because they were like foundational, even if they're not as fun to play now, or do we just put a bunch of new stuff because it's like objectively better? <laughs> but is it like, is it too new? You know, like, is it just too much new stuff? And yeah, there was a lot of back and forth, and we saw the comments, people being like, "Where the hell is Deus Ex?" <laughs> um, specifically that that was the one that kept popping up the most surprisingly yeah. no we were bracing Correct. where is Deus we were bracing for people to be like angry but it hasn't been too bad I think people They've get it they've been more mad at each other which is <laughs> Yeah. Which is the correct direction yeah. to because you it's you guys voting on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think yeah, it's just one of those things. Like we went with sixty four, and it's like we're just we're not gonna get everything. We're just not. You know. <laughs> it's I, was like, saying, I'm sorry. There, I was saying, is there a game like you know we can take turns? Like, is there a game that isn't on there that you wish was? I I was the one that I sort of acquiesced on was Inside from Play Dead. Oh, um, okay. I was like I that's like in my personal top three <laughs> maybe um but it's still it's a little niche i think i i don't i think it would have got knocked out pretty early so that was probably mine um i know it would not have uh, the the two that i would uh, i'm indulge me i'm yeah, going to no, take please. two on this one um first one outer wilds is like one of my favorite games of all time mm, i don't uh, think it would have hung around on this list very long if it did but like truly i think one of the best things ever played and luigi's mansion those are like my two favorite games oh very right. different okay. entirely but <laughs> show luigi a little love you know both scary yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm trying to pull up my i made a list of my top 25 games of all time on twitter and put it oh. up here oh i did do that at one point no uh, no, uh, no lego on here remember. charles would you have There's fought no lego, would you have fought is... for a lego of some kind maybe? yeah sonic and the black lego knight didn't make it. sonic and the black knight what if we just kicked my, off my two favorite games kicked off <laughs> um, <Elden> Ring. Ring. <laughs> i don't think either of those games are worth it uh, uh yeah i don't know it's hard it's hard for me to suggest anything that wouldn't get knocked off really quick a personal like uh, I think Spider-Man Miles Morales is better than the first one, but I don't oh, sure. think it would have yeah. gotten any farther than the other one. Is is there any Assassin's Creed on here? I don't, I don't remember. I don't there think there's a any. single Assassin's Creed. So I'd maybe Creed, throw Assassin's yeah. Creed 2 or Brotherhood on here. I, Brotherhood's my favorite, yeah. but I think 2 also. I think those 2 could have hanged because everyone likes those. Yeah, or Black yeah. Flag. Um, I think that's probably... Also, my favorite Mario game is Mario Odyssey. Um, we have other Mario games on there. But yeah, more of a, like Mar- really a Mario thing. Galaxy is mine, but I don't think mm-hmm. I think we kind of just put sixty four on there and sort of washed our hands. <laughs> Which, <laughs> no, Gal- Gal- no Galaxy's, Galaxy's on there. Is it? Oh, okay, Galaxy. It lost to Breath of the Wild in the first round. Okay, yeah, okay. that's a tough matchup. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very tough matchup. I do love Galaxy. Yeah. Brian was like, "Sure, we'll add it to the list," and puts it right next to Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it'll be on there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm With other think. games I really like are, are like God of War, Last of Us, Arkham City, Baldur's Gate Three. Those like a lot of a lot of those big Charles games are already on there. So yeah, if I wanted to be like super Marcusy picks, I might have like like something stylish, actiony, like a like a Devil May Cry Three mm, yeah. or something, or Near like a there. oh that would have been an interesting. N- Nears on there. Think about that. Is it? Yeah. It, Wait, was it? It lost to. Uh, Did he get knocked it off? It lost to Fallout Three. Oh, uh, so, yep. I understand, but <laughs> yep. also somebody use somebody <laughs> use bats. Your automata is on there. Yeah. Jesse, Jesse yeah. just the, the, encapsulated it perfectly. It's I I understand, <laughs> but I'm upset. That's like my reaction to every single one of these. <laughs> the fan base collectively pulled out their vats and targeted Tubi's head and just put a <laughs> bitch, put a bullet in there. <laughs> um, Damn. Uh, yeah. To see it. I was gonna say like a but yeah like a Devil May Cry three or like even like a Bayonetta two, which I I don't know how far. It, Devil May Cry 3 probably have a better shot just because the series is probably bigger, maybe. Um, 
I, I almost forgot that Mario Galaxy was there because it got knocked out so fast. Because I, originally I was thinking like, oh, Mario Galaxy, was that was that on there? Or at least maybe the second one, which is arguably better. Um, gosh. Again, this is like a super Marcus pick, but like WWF No Mercy, one of the greatest wrestling games of all time. <laughs> maybe still the best wrestling game of all time, which does yeah, have a lot of game. nostalgia. Like I, it could have, yeah. depending on how it matched up against it, might have gotten out the first round, maybe. <laughs> but... <laughs> Again, that would be more like if we had like a hundred slots and we just really, yeah. But even you know, but that probably would have still I, been a big ass. I, was gonna say, anyway, I don't know. But... It might have to be closer to like five hundred. <laughs> 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 I mean, There's that's... a lot of Zelda games, Marcus. Yeah. That is that. I mean, that's that's true. Uh, I am surprised that we didn't have an Assassin's Creed. I, I don't yeah, think that I, actually I is one. That. Yeah, yeah. I would have liked to see two on there at least, or even like um, maybe something indie like like Hades. Mm. Hades wasn't on it, right? No, it was. It was. Oh, it was. Oh, okay. It lost round one to Link some. to the Past. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's how hard. The I don't work. So, but yeah, I think overall we we did our best. Like we had a we had a good lineup of games. So, who do you guys think's gonna win? You want to call it now? Breath With of the Wild. What, what's left? <laughs> Baldur's Gate three. I th- I think Breath of the Wild, honestly. Yeah, I think Breath of the Wild's gonna take it. I think it's a Zelda. That's, that's not helpful. I was like, I'm trying to decide. But Ocar- I feel like Ocarina has so much nostalgia behind it that it's. I feel like I. I feel like when I've looked at all the the rounds that it's won, it has more or less like bulldozed over everything. I don't know if there's ever been like a super tight race with it, unless I'm misremembering. I don't, yeah, I, I have to look. I'm not sure. The thing I'm least sure about is this Breath of the Wild versus Elden Ring matchup because that's mm. a very like. I feel like. Not that you can't like both of those games, but I feel like people usually have one of those that like means more to them than the other. I don't know if I'm just well, projecting it onto people. I don't know but... if it's... I mean, that might have happened, because last I checked, Skyrim is winning against Elden Ring. So. Oh, really? Yes. I'm so sure. It's not a huge lead, but it's it, it's 53% Skyrim, 47% Elden Ring at the moment. Wow. So that, okay. Which I'm actually somewhat surprised by, surprised, but also I'm yeah. remembering that Skyrim is super popular and it has been for so long that it's like... And I think also Elden Ring, as big as it is, it doesn't have the widespread appeal because of how sure. hard it is. Sure. Like yeah. Skyrim, anyone yeah. can get into Elden Ring, you kind of have to be talked into if you're not already like a souls fan like people gotta convince you, like no, no it's cool you're gonna like this it, it won't make you angry <laughs> elden ring hasn't been put on the smart refrigerators yet yeah. once, yeah. Once, right. there, once we get the the alexa room. version of, of elden ring, <laughs> of elden ring we'll be it's just you died is it just that's the response every time i went to I, I go into a cave and the amazon's like you died <laughs> here's millennia <laughs> good Try luck to solo her figure it out <laughs> Alrighty, but yes, uh, that is our uh, tournament. You can still, still time to go vote. Yeah, maybe you can help Elden Ring get out of the, you know, get out of the the from under the boot of Skyrim. Yeah, by the way, it's <laughs> not it's... that we're manipulating you either way. Vote how you want to vote. <laughs> I have no dog in this race. Yeah. Um, it's I don't game... think I clarified that. Hmm? I was just gonna share the URL: gameinformer.com/slash/gamegauntlet2024. There it is. Game Gauntlet 2024. Uh, let's see what happens. Also, I, I, I say, I don't know if I was clear in my prediction, but I'm going to say Ocarina takes it. Mm. All right. Nostalgia is going to win. So cool. we shall see. And yeah, that wraps up this episode. Uh, next week, a biggie, episode 700. Looking oh, forward yeah. to that. Yeah, it's episode oh. 699 for those that like to keep count. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for supporting us and helping us to reach that high number. And, of course, we wouldn't be able to do it without you. If you didn't, subscribe to the magazine and pick up a single issue of Game Informer, which you can do at GameStop for just $7.99 once again. Uh, it's a great way to support us and help keep us around. Uh, we love it when you do it. And our uh, No Rest for the Wicked cover story should be up soon if it's not there already. Otherwise, you could be sure to follow us all on social media. You can find myself on Twitter and Blue Sky at Marcus Stewart Seven. Uh, Kyle, where can people find you? Uh, Kyle Hilliard on Blue Sky. Kyle M Hilliard on Twitter because I like to mix it up. That's what the M stands for. Mix it up. <laughs> Kyle, mix it up, Hilliard. <laughs> uh, Charles, where can folks find you? Chuck Duck three six five anywhere. <laughs> awesome. 
And Jesse, thank you so much for joining us. Feel free to not only tell us uh, where folks can find you, but plug anything that you got going on. Uh, yeah, so you can find me just at Jesse Vitelli pretty much everywhere. I don't think I have any different handle in any spot. And if I do, don't find me. Do not contact me. <laughs> yeah, you're the only Jesse uh, Vitelli in the world. It's true. I have the best SEO ranking for Jesse Vitelli's out there. So <laughs> I'm going to keep that strong. Um, as far as like things going on, I'm going to PAX East this week. So oh. if you're around the Boston area and you see me around, say what's up. Happy to, to chat with y'all, you know. Um, but otherwise, no, nothing current on the on the horizon, which is which is nice. I'm taking, you know, I'm taking my my, my Boston break. Um, <laughs> but you know, I've I've had some work go up at uh, Digital Trend, Shack News, Kotaku, all these other places. So Google my name and you'll find them because yeah. I don't have links readily available. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, but, uh, just a huge thanks to to having me on the show. Uh, really appreciate it. Of course, always always welcomed. And you can find uh, Game Informer as a whole on uh, various social media platforms, including uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, Facebook, Threads, Blue Sky, uh, TikTok, uh, assuming it doesn't get banned, and, <laughs> and then also um, our Twitch channel, which you can find at twitch.tv slash Game Informer. Uh, we try to do weekly streams. We've got our ongoing Super Replay series with myself and Kyle currently playing through the entirety of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Uh, me for the first time ever. Uh, Majora's Mask didn't make the uh, Gamer Gauntlet list. No. I, I mean, I that. yeah. I, I, Ocarina's on there, man. It's got covered. <laughs> <laughs> you have one. Yeah. Fair, fair. I was going to say, like, we'll see how I feel when I beat the game if I feel like, hey, we, we, we screwed Majora's Mask over. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am enjoying my time with it. And you can watch me enjoy my time with it uh, every Friday at 2 p.m. Central on Twitch. Uh, also, special uh, check out our other podcast, uh, All Things Nintendo, starring Brian Shea. And of course, our big special shout out to our wonderful podcast editor, Matt Storm, aka DJ Storm again. Be sure to check out their podcast, Fun and Games, as well as Reignite, which is a Bioware focused podcast. And yeah, that is a show. Uh, I know we got a, a backlog of listener questions that we need to get to. You know what? We'll probably do that next week. We'll probably maybe. Maybe next week for episode 700, we'll do a, a big listener question. That'd be good. Extravaganza. Uh, not extravaganza and extravaganza. It's better. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll keep you posted on that. But, uh, yeah. If there's anything else, no no lunch song this week, Kyle? Uh, you know what? Just listen to the end of the episode. We'll get we'll throw a lunch <laughs> song in there, right, Charles? We can do that. Yeah, I'm feeling festive. Oh, okay, all right. Is that a tease? Perhaps. Let me, uh, let me <laughs> okay. write down add lunch song to end of video so I don't forget. Because <laughs> <laughs> this was planned until I brought it up. No, yeah. <laughs> if Charles is here, I want to have a lunch song. That's you know that's how I feel about it. That part isn't his contract. He's here. That's right. lo- he brings a lunch song <laughs> with him. Yeah, you have to. Well, yes. Thank you for watching, guys. We'll be back next week for episode 700. We'll see you there. Bye bye. <laughs>
four cauliflowers, three french fries, two purple plums, and a parchment-covered pastry. On the eighth day of lunch, songs my Charles gave to me. Eight kinds of milk tea, seven soups of brimming, six fish fillets, five onion rings. Four cauliflowers, three french fries, two purple plums, and a parchment-covered pastry. On the ninth day of lunch, songs my Charles gave to me. Nine taters blanching, eight kinds of milk tea, seven soups of brimming, six fish fillets, five onion rings. Four cauliflowers, three french fries, two purple plums, and a parchment-covered pastry. On the tenth day of lunch, songs my Charles gave to me. Ten forms of lychee, nine taters blanching, eight kinds of milk tea, seven soups of brimming, six fish fillets, five onion rings. Four cauliflowers, three french fries, two purple plums, and a parchment-covered pastry. On the eleventh day of lunch, songs my Charles gave to me. Eleven pies of piping, ten forms of lychee, nine taters blanching, eight kinds of milk tea, seven soups of brimming, six fish fillets, five onion rings. Four cauliflowers, three french fries, two purple plums, and a parchment-covered pastry. On the twelfth day of lunch, songs my Charles gave to me. Twelve yummy drumsticks, eleven pies of piping, ten forms of lychee, nine taters blanching, eight kinds of milk tea, seven soups of brimming, six fish fillets, five onion rings. Four cauliflowers, three french fries, two purple plums, and a parchment-covered pastry. Um, yeah, we'll see. Charles, can you talk for a second? I've been playing push mode. That's plenty. We don't need to know anymore. That is weird. That's not the game I thought would come in your mouth. Uh, <laughs> Kyle's upset with you now. Yeah, really what do you mean? Hold on. What, on 3DS or Wii U? Where are you playing? I've just been on a 3DS kick. I beat Pokemon X, and I was like, I just want to keep playing this thing. I mean, Pushmo's cool. I've got yeah. Pushmo. Well, yeah. Nothing wrong with Pushmo. I just... X. No one's playing. But you're gonna be Push saying, I started playing Dylan's Roland Western. <laughs> what was that we game don't, called? We don't, do, we don't do Dylan slander in this house. I, 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 I wasn't gonna say. I wasn't saying anything bad. I was just saying it's an old ass game. <laughs> Organizing <laughs> the retail store Dylan. in that game, so much fun. They did, uh, Jesse, they did two of those. About? Yeah, I, I reviewed them both. Yeah, yeah Dead, Dead Heat yeah. Breakers, I think, is the other Dylan yeah. game, right? I think. Yeah, I've never played either of them, but I love Dylan. Yeah, that was. What was that? Was that Sega? Uh, I no, I don't think it's Sega. It's like Who Nintendo does? published. It's weird. Uh, one yeah. of them has like me characters dressed up as animals. That might be the the second one. I don't Maybe. know. I remember watching it. You Nintendo know a lot about ago. these games. I do. Never Look, seen, never yeah, it, it started out as a bit, and it is slowly moved into like I know too much about Dylan. <laughs> and it's, the foremost it's Dylan Esper. <laughs> That should just be your your freelance beat. Is like I'm just the Dylan, <laughs> Dylan western. Guy. I'm trying to be the weird little guys, weird little guys guy. And Dylan definitely falls into that category. He's a God, he's a weird yeah. little guy. Absolutely. Bring back Dylan. Uh, all right, yeah, we're good to go. Uh, whenever you guys are ready. <clears throat>